Okay. That. Okay, recording. And then I will share my screen. Okay, semua boleh nampak skrin saya, suara saya jelas? Nampak doktor, jelas jelas. Okay. okay, thank you for the response. Okay, uh, today we will learn about uh, chapter 2 which is the electrical noise. Okay, last week uh, there's no class because of the public holiday and I already upload the video, okay, based on section 1 uh, lecture session. So hopefully you have uh, seen uh, that video. Uh, you have understand about uh, the basic concept of uh, power calculations, uh, power ratio, uh, decibels uh, calculations and so on. So now uh, we will look into another topic which is chapter two, uh, electrical noise. So this chapter uh, of course will come out in the test and also in the final exam. Okay, pasti akan keluar. So, in the, in chapter 2, you're going to learn uh, seven subtopics. Eh? Uh, the type of noise, uh, what are the type of noise, the family tree of the noise. And then you will learn about the noise spectral density, uh, N0 or N0. Eh? This is uh, N0, N0, which is uh, equal to the... Uh, which is equal to the noise power over uh, the bandwidth, okay, which is uh, equal to the noise power over the bandwidth, okay. So, ini adalah uh, watt per hertz. Eh? So, unitnya adalah uh, watt per hertz. And then, you're going to learn about uh, SNR calculations, okay. And then the noise factor, noise factor is uh, F parameter, okay. And then noise figure is the NF parameter. So NF is actually equal to uh, logarithmic of noise factor, okay, log F, sorry, 10 log F. Eh? Let me see, yeah. Ten log f, okay. Ten log f of uh, ten log of noise factor. You're gonna get noise figure, which is in decibel, okay. Uh, freeze formula. So freeze formula is uh, the way to calculate the total noise factor f total, and also to find the noise figure total, okay. If Let's say you're going to have a cascaded system, more than one amplifier, for example. Okay. So if you have more than one amplifier, uh, that means uh, you're going to get an accumulated of a noise factor. So there's a way to calculate the total noise factor, which will be used, uh, which we will use a freeze formula. Okay. Kita menggunakan freeze formula untuk, kita menggunakan freeze formula untuk mencari uh, total noise factor dan juga total noise figure di dalam satu sistem yang mempunyai beberapa uh, component amplifiers for example okay and for your information uh, about the f eh, f factor so noise fa noise factor is actually equal to snr input over snr output okay so tadi mula-mula bahagian yang ketiga you belajar tentang SNR and then continuity of that is you're going to learn about noise factor uh, which is the ratio of input SNR over SNR output okay and then uh, you, this is for the for the single system what about if we have a cascaded system that means we need to use the freeze formula uh, so in order to get the total noise factor and also the noise figure and after that uh, 6 uh, equivalent noise temperature which is uh, TE so you're going to see that equivalent temperature is the uh, is the, is the temperature within the system itself okay, generated by the system itself which contribute to the internal noise okay 
it's later you're going to see that the relationship between TE and also F. Okay, ada perkaitan antara TE dan juga F. Where TE contributes to the noise factor. The higher the TE, the higher would be the noise factor. So, for your information, uh, ideally, we want the noise factor to be as minimum as possible. Okay. Sebab lagi tinggi nilai noise factor, maka lagi tinggi nilai noise. Okay. So, we hope that the noise will be as minimum as possible, similar to the noise figure. Okay. So, we're going to see about that later. And then noise measurement is to find the, uh, what they call the RMS noise voltage. Eh? Okay. We, we want to find the RMS noise voltage. Eh? VRMS of the of the noise. Eh? So we want to find the RMS noise voltage for uh, for the measurements of uh, noise okay, at particular of time. Okay, kita membuat bacaan uh, noise voltage. Okay, kita mengukur noise voltage pada masa-masa tertentu and we want to find the, the, the average, okay, the average uh, VRMS of the noise in the system. Okay, itu kita akan lihat pada akhir, uh, pada akhir uh, chapter 2, which is the subtopic number 7. Okay, and for your information, uh, chapter 2 is more focused on uh, part 3, 4, 5 and 6. Okay. So these are the, the the core of chapter 2. Okay, chapter 2 akan lebih tertumpu kepada bahagian 3, 4, 5 dan 6. Eh. Especially number 4 and 5. Okay, so this uh, which uh, 4, 5 uh, and also 6. Eh. Ini akan masuk dalam uh, test. Eh. Test akan masuk uh, perkara inilah. Okay. So... So let's look at the noise uh, family tree. Eh? So ini dia punya keluarga besar. So noise can be divided into two categories which are the uncorrelated noise and also the uh, correlated noise. Okay, so what are, what are those uh, noise? Okay, so let's look at the uh, uncorrelated noise. Eh? For the uncorrelated noise, we have external and internal noise. Okay, kita ada external and internal noise. So external noise are the noise that uh, generated from outside of the system. Okay, generated from outside of the transmitter and receiver. So we can categorize into five uh, groups, which are the atmospheric noise, extraterrestrial noise. So atmospheric noise is the noise from the generated from the electric static from the atmosphere. Extraterrestrial noise is the noise generated from outside of the earth in the deep space. Man-made noise or the industrial noise, okay, which is due to the human activities, especially in the industry side. Okay. Impulse noise is the sudden uh, burst of uh, noise. And then interference is the type of noise that has the same frequency as our frequency. Okay, which will interfere to the uh, to our which will interfere to the uh, our system. It will degrade the quality of the output. Internal noise uh, will be divided into three categories, which are the short noise, transient time noise, and also thermal noise. And we will focus more on this part, eh, thermal noise. Uh, thermal noise means that uh, the noise that are related to the uh, temperature variations. The higher the temperature, the higher would be the noise level. Okay, so we will learn about that later. And then uh, we move to the uh, left side, which is the correlated noise. So correlated noise uh, produced within the system. So correlated noise is actually internal noise. Okay, dia dalam kategori internal noise sebenarnya. So, uh, non-linear distortions, uh, it is uh, one of it is a non-linear distortions which can be divided into harmonic distortions HD and also intermodulation distortion. Okay, 
So you're going to see later that um, what are the differences between these two? Uh, we're going to see later. Okay. So for your information, uh, this picture has been asked in the previous semester's uh, test a long time ago, uh, long before the COVID. Uh, we give uh, questions about this picture. We leave a blank uh, some boxes. Okay, kita biarkan kosong beberapa kotak dan pelajar perlu isi kotak tersebut. Eh? Uh, same as this one, okay? Uh, so, uh, so, but for now, uh, since uh, the, the test is online, final exam also online, so uh, that kind of question is not relevant anymore, okay? So, kalau sebelum ni kita bagi ni macam soalan bonus, eh? Uh, tetapi pada masa itu uh, banyak juga pelajar tak dapat jawab uh, dan banyak pelajar yang dapat jawab. Okay. So two type of noise uh, which is the correlated noise and also uncorrelated noise as we see from the first uh, branch over here. Eh? Correlated and uncorrelated. So what are the difference? So correlated noise implies the relationship between the signal and the noise which exists only when there is a si when signal is present okay so apa maksud dia so if you have a system like this for example a transmitter for example okay and here is the input so only if we have input okay only if you have the input to the system then the correlated noise will happen okay hanya jika ada input saja barulah wujudnya correlated noise okay and for the uncorrelated noise is the type of noise that present at all time whether there's a signal or not so under this category there are two uh, types which are the internal noise and external noise so maksudnya uncorrelated noise ini sentiasa wujud walaupun tidak ada input signal ke dalam sistem Okay, if I remove this one, so the internal noise still happen regardless whether there's a signal or not. Okay, sama ada ada signal atau tidak, dia tetap wujud. Okay. And let's look at the external noise. Okay, this is the uncorrelated noise. Uh, the first category is the external noise, which is uh, the noise that generated from outside of the circuit, outside of the system. Okay. So there are three primary sources which are the atmospheric, atmospheric noise, extraterrestrial noise, and also the man-made noise. Okay, ada tiga bahagian. Yang pertama adalah atmospheric noise which is uh, naturally uh, occurring uh, electrical disturbance originate within the Earth's uh, atmosphere. It is called as the static electricity. So it is actually the static electricity that exists within the Earth's atmosphere which uh, also contribute to a small type of noise which will disturb the signal transmission. Okay, so most static electricity is naturally occurring electrical conditions such as lighting. Okay, such as lighting in the form of impulse spread energy throughout the wide range of frequencies. So this atmospheric noise is insignificant. Maksudnya dia sangat kecil ataupun uh, boleh diabaikan if the frequency uh, of the signal of our signal transmission is more than 30 megahertz. Okay, kalau kita punya signal lebih daripada 30 megahertz, uh, dia punya, uh, dia menjadi kurang relevan eh. Uh, boleh diabaikan kerana nilainya terlalu kecil. Okay, dia tidak, meng, tidak, tidak mengganggu eh kepada uh, quality of the signal. Extraterrestrial noise, the second type of uh, external noise, which is extraterrestrial noise, extraterrestrial noise uh, consists of electrical signal that originate from outside of the Earth atmosphere, which is in the deep space noise. Okay, this is also known as the deep space noise. Dia berlaku pada uh, luar uh, bumi, eh, di dalam uh, uh, di dalam uh, free, uh, di, di luar daripada uh, bumi lah. Eh. Okay, so dia can it, this can be divided into two. Okay, so extraterrestrial can be divided into two. The first one is the solar noise. So solar noise is related to the sun activity. Okay, so generally uh, generated directly from the sun heat. There are two parts of the solar noise. The first one is the quiet condition. 
when constant radiation intensity exists and high intensity. And then a sporadic disturbance caused by the sunspot activities and solar flare-ups which occurs every 11 years. So matahari ni dia tidak static eh. Dia seperti uh, gunung berapi yang sentiasa meletus-letus eh. So ada ketikanya dia akan um, banyak uh, memancarkan dia punya lava panas itu eh. So that that uh, activities, that kind of activities creates a variation of noise. Okay. Yang paling ketara adalah sporadic disturbance which is a special activity uh, which is a uh, special activity by the sun eh, yang mana dia happens only a certain number of years only. Okay. So due to this, dia akan ada noise yang lebih besar. Okay. So perubahan aktiviti dalam mat uh, matahari itu mengakibatkan uh, uh, variation of noise. Okay. Yang boleh uh, mengganggu kepada kita punya uh, sistem penghantaran signal. Okay. Kemudian uh, cosmic noise, okay, which is continuously distributed throughout the galaxies. It is a small type uh, of noise intensity okay, because the source of the galactic noise, uh, galactic noise are located much further away. So this is also called as a black body noise. So cosmic noise ini uh, uh, berlaku pada deep space, uh, pada, bahag, pada galaksi kita, throughout the galaxy, okay, disebabkan oleh uh, pergerakan uh, uh, komet, uh, meteor dan sebagainya eh, di dalam uh, uh, deep space tersebut. Eh. So dia, uh, the, 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 the amount is very, very small, okay, the amount is very small, but if we do the measurement, dia, kita boleh nampak dia punya uh, naik turun of the, uh, the the variation of the noise eh, level. Okay. So dia wujud tetapi uh, nilainya sangat kecil. Okay. Man-made noise uh, source as a spark producing mechanism such as from commutators in electric motors, automobile ignition and etc. It is impulsive in nature, contains wide range of frequency that propagate through the space, same manner as radio waves. Okay. So uh, it is most intense in populated metropolitan and industrial areas and it is therefore called sometimes industrial noise. Okay. So ini disebabkan oleh uh, human activities eh, yang mana mengakibatkan noise-noise uh, 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 yang boleh mengganggu, jenis-jenis eh, noise yang boleh mengganggu sistem penghantaran. Okay, apakah contoh-contohnya? Contohnya daripada electric motors, automobile ignitions, uh, uh, industrial activities within uh, factories and so on. Eh? So this is what we call as a man-made noise. Okay, disebabkan oleh aktiviti ma uh, manusia di muka bumi ini. So adanya uh, uh, jenis noise yang dipanggil sebagai man-made noise. So ini sangat ketara terutamanya di kawasan uh, perindustrian. Eh? di kawasan uh, penasrian, di kawasan bandar yang pesat. Okay. And then, uh, impulse noise it is a high amplitude peaks of short duration in the total noise spectrum, consists of sudden bursts of irregularly shaped pulses, more devastated on digital data, so it is more critical towards a digital system, uh, produced from electromechanical switches, electrical motor, and etc. So ini juga uh, sebahagian daripada man-made noise sebenarnya. Eh. So dia juga ada, uh, man-made noise juga boleh menghasilkan impulse noise. So kalau dilihat, uh, dikatakan di sini is a high amplitude of short duration. So kalau kita buat uh, satu graf, eh, contoh. Eh. Uh, for example, uh, voltage versus time. So it is a very short durations, okay, very short durations of uh, signal, eh? very short duration of signals at high amplitudes. Okay, very short duration of signal at high amplitudes, which cause the uh, which cause the disturbance to the uh, signal transmission. Okay, dia adalah satu sudden burst. Okay, okay. Mungkin kalau saya lukis yang lebih cantik sikit. Eh? Ya, eh? Saya tu lebak lukis ni susah sikit. Okay, okay. Uh, so sudden burst, eh? sudden, suddenly uh, uh, there's a high amplitude of 
noise eh, due to this uh, due to certain activities uh, so dalam masa yang singkat ada satu uh, noise zoop, dia punya amplitude tinggi no, itu that's one what we call as a impulse noise okay and then uh, interference interference is also type of external noise okay which uh, cause from a signal uh, from another signal that has the same same frequency as our signal okay so uh, untuk signal uh, contohnya if i transmit signal at 100 megahertz you also transmit signal at 100 megahertz so your signal will interfere with my signal okay so you are the noise to my uh, you are you create noise or you create interference to my signal okay so what happened is that uh, the the receiver will be unable to differentiate uh, the signal say, from two different sources okay receiver menghadapi masalah at the end it will produce a lot of errors in the output of the receiver okay dia akan menghasilkan uh, signal yang bercampur-campur okay so receive uh, it will give a big problem at the receiver side to do the demodulation process to get the original signal okay because we have two two same frequencies but different sources okay macam mana kalau ada banyak eh? kalau ada banyak sources yang menghantar pada uh, frekuensi yang sama there's going to be a big problem okay so that's why we need to uh, manage uh, the frequency spectrum in order to avoid the interference so interference this is a big uh, this is the uh, the hot topics uh, in communication system where we want to separate uh, the spectrum eh, for different kind of applications okay so in, in order we want to avoid the interference so kita cuba sedaya upaya untuk uh, mengelakkan berlakunya interference eh? or we try to reduce it as minimum as possible okay so this is a very challenging task. And then we move to the internal noise, the noise that generated within the system. Okay, there are three types, uh, short noise, transit time noise, and also the thermal noise. So short noise is caused by the random arrival of carriers, such as, such as a hole and electron, at the output element of the electronic device, such as diode, fill effect transistor, uh, bipolar, transistor okay so the current carriers ac and dc are not moving in a continuous steady flow as the distance they travel varies because of their random path of motions so short noise randomly varying and is superimposed into any signal uh, present so when amplified short noise sounds similar to metal pellets falling on a tin roof sometimes it is called as a transistor noise so in short Okay, secara ringkasnya, so as uh, to summarize this, short noise is the noise generated due to the uh, random movement. Okay, random movement or random arrival of the carrier within the device. Okay, disebabkan pergerakan rawak uh, gelomba, apa tu, carrier, iaitu hole and electron dalam device, dia meng uh, menghasilkan short noise. So, ini sebenarnya banyak berlaku dalam uh, dalam uh, transistors okay dia banyak berlaku dalam transistors transit time noise uh, this is uh, so it said that here any modification to a stream of carriers as they pass from the input to the output of a device produce irregular random variations so emitted to the collector in the transit so the time it takes for the carrier to propagate through the device is an applicable part of the time of one cycle of the signal so the noise become noticeable so this is related so this transit time noise is related to the time taken for the carriers to move from one place to another so the higher the the time or the delay of that movement will cause higher transit time noise Okay, lagi lama, lagi lama pergerakan eh, daripada satu point ke another point. So in this case, for example, like the uh, like the uh, transistor, the movement of the collector from emitter to the uh, from collector to emitter. 
So the, the longer the time taken for the electron to move from one point to another, the higher would be the transit time noise. Okay, so ini berkaitan dengan uh, delay masa pergerakan carrier tersebut di dalam device, electronic device. So, uh, I say that here, uh, sorry, yeah, transit time noise is transistor, in transistor, this is a, in transistor, is determined by the carrier mobility, bias voltage and transistor construction. Carriers traveling from emitter to collector suffers from emitter delay, uh, yeah, base uh, uh, time delay, transit time noise, and collector recombination time and propagation time delays. So, ini berkaitan dengan masa, so lagi panjang masa delay itu pergerakan uh, carrier di dalam device maka lagi tinggi nilai transit time noise. Okay, if transmit delays are excessive at high frequency, the device may add more noise than amplification of the signal. So ini uh, menjadi critical pada frekuensi yang tinggi. Okay, so kalau frekuensi tinggi maknanya satu cycle itu menjadi sangat cepat. So kalau transit time delay, transit time, uh, kalau masa delay pergerakan itu lebih besar, maka dia akan menghasilkan uh, noise yang ketara eh, di dalam signal tersebut. Okay. And then thermal noise. So thermal noise is due to the rapid and random movement of electron within a conductor due to thermal agitation and present in all electronic components in communication system. So it is uniformly distributed across the entire electromagnetic spectrum, often referred as white noise. Okay. So the word white here is not of color. Dia bukan color putih. Okay. White noise means that it is distributed across the entire frequency spectrum. Okay. Tak kira lah frekuensi apa pun, dia tetap wujud. Okay. So dia menggunakan uh, analogi white because a uh, white color is a mixture of uh, all colors okay so uh, so it, dia menggunakan perkataan white itu as an analogy to, untuk menggambarkan uh, bahawa noise ini berlaku pada semua spectrum frequency okay dia tidak bergantung kepada frekuensi dia bergantung kepada uh, dia bergantung kepada uh, sorry dia tidak bergantung kepada frekuensi eh. so regardless of the frequency dia tetap wujud. Sama ada low frequency or high frequency, it will exist. Okay. So the form of additive noise means that it cannot be eliminated and it increases in intensity with the number of device and circuit length. Uh, so lagi banyak device di dalam sistem itu, maka lagi tinggi uh, nilai thermal noise. Okay. And also uh, if the circuit length is bigger, or longer, so thermal noise sentiasa happen. So thermal noise dia berkait dengan suhu. Dia tidak bergantung kepada frekuensi. Okay, so it's set as the upper bound of the performance of the communication system. So it is a temperature dependent, random and continuous that occurs in all frequencies. So kita akan fokus kepada thermal noise eh, in our syllabus. Okay, we will focus more on the thermal noise. And if you see from your assignment also, related to thermal noise okay noise spectral density or known as a n0 and not is the noise power per unit bandwidth okay noise power per unit bandwidth that is the power spectral density of the noise okay the ketumpatan uh, noise eh? uh, juga dipanggil sebagai ketumpatan noise it has a unit of watts hertz watts per hertz which is equivalent to watt seconds or joules. Okay, watt hertz juga adalah watt seconds ataupun dipanggil joules. Okay, so if the noise is wide, which is uh, distributed across the entire spectrum, so constant with frequency when the total power is n in the bandwidth of B, uh, therefore the uh, noise spectral density... Okay, so dia gini eh. So N0 is equal to N or Pn divide with the bandwidth. So noise, total noise power N is equal to uh, the bandwidth multiplied with noise 
power spectral density n0, bn0. Okay, so this is utilized in the signal to noise ratio calculations. Okay, signal to noise ratio calculation. Uh, we want to find the signal level over the noise level. Okay, ini yang digunakan dalam pengiraan SNR. So thermal noise density is given by N0 and not is equal to KT. K is the Boltzmann constant, T is the temperature in Kelvin. Okay, the Boltzmann constant unit is joules per Kelvin. Okay, it is a constant uh, parameters. Okay. Boltzmann constant adalah constant parameters dalam unit joules per Kelvin and T is the uh, receiver system noise temperature in Kelvin. Okay, so you see that uh, this is uh, this is another equation. Eh? We, you can also use uh, this uh, N over B or you can use K multiplied with T. You're going to get the same answer. Okay, so ini juga berkaitan dengan ini eh. Okay, so N0 is commonly used in the link budget uh, as the denominator of the important figure of merits ratios such as EB over N0 and also ES over N0. So this is the parameter used for the digital system. Okay, EB is a bit energy per noise power spectral density. ES is a symbol energy over noise power spectral density okay so what is this actually so this is equivalent okay equivalent means uh, not not the same eh? this uh, equivalent to the snr dia adalah kedua-dua ini adalah parameter yang equivalent kepada snr kerana di dalam digital system we are not using the uh, snr to determine the performance okay instead we are more using eb over n not and also es over and not. Okay, di dalam digital system, kita lebih prefer menggunakan parameter ini. Di dalam analog system, we are more using the SNR. Okay, dalam analog system, kita banyak menggunakan SNR. Okay, so EB over N0, ES over N0, that one you're going to learn about that in chapter 4. Okay, akan banyak belajar dalam chapter 4. Okay, the noise power. Uh, so, noise power is given as Pn, okay, Pn or N. Eh? So, you can write N or Pn, it's no problem. Uh, is uh, equal to integral of uh, uh, from lower frequency to the higher frequency in the bandwidth. Eh? So, dalam bandwidth, uh, bandwidth so, so, this is from minus B to B, eh? okay. Cameron from one, minus B to B, N0 over 2 DF. So you're going to get N0 B. Eh? So for the power. And we can write this N0 B as KTB because N0 is KT. Okay, N0 is KT. Okay. And this is the important parameters that you must know. Okay. Ini adalah parameter yang kamu perlu tahu ataupun hafal eh, KTB. So noise power is equal to KTB in what? So uh, Pn is a noise power, K is a Boltzmann constant which is 1.38 times 10 power of minus 3 joule per Kelvin. Okay and then B is a bandwidth in Hertz. Okay in Hertz, T is the absolute temperature in Kelvin. Uh, so, room temperature in your syllabus is stated as 17 degrees Celsius or equivalent to 290 Kelvin. So, dalam uh, syllabus kamu, uh, suhu bilik eh, by default adalah 17 darjah Celsius. Okay, biasa kita belajar sebelum ni uh, suhu bilik 25 darjah Celsius eh. tetapi dalam, uh, dalam uh, nota ini, uh, dia berdasarkan buku Wayne Tomasi. So Wayne Tomasi's books, uh, room temperature is 17 degrees Celsius. Uh, mungkin dekat negara dia agak sejuk eh, compare dengan negara kita. Okay, so uh, so we assume that uh, in our, dalam subjek ini, kita menganggap suhu bilik adalah 17 darjah Celsius by default. Okay, so 17 degrees Celsius uh, 
uh, is equivalent to 290 Kelvin. So if you want to change from Celsius, degree Celsius to Kelvin, okay, so you need to plus with 273, okay. Celsius plus 273, you're going to get uh, in Kelvin. Contoh tadi, eh? 17 plus 273, it is equal to 290 Kelvin. Uh, so, uh, 273 ini perlu diingat. Eh? Make sure you know that how to convert Celsius to Kelvin. You need to plus with 273. Okay, because sometimes in the exam, uh, not sometimes, but most of the time we give you uh, in terms of degree Celsius, uh, you need to convert into Kelvin. Perlu tukar dalam Kelvin untuk membuat calculations. Remember, all calculations regarding temperature must be in Kelvin. Dia tidak boleh dalam Celsius. Okay. So it said here that it is clear that the power spectral density of thermal noise increase with the increase of the ambient temperature. Therefore, keeping the electric circle cool will make their noise level low. Uh, so, kalau dilihat di sini, eh, noise power berkadar terus dengan temperature. Lagi tinggi temperature, maka lagi tinggi noise level. So it is said that if we manage to reduce the temperature, we can reduce uh, the amount of noise power. Okay, tetapi berapa sejuk yang kita nak maintain? Uh, that one is uh, depend on the situations. Okay. Uh, ini juga berkait dengan assignment you. Okay, ada bermain dengan uh, temperatures, temperature setting. Okay, how you can uh, how you can uh, manage to provide the the uh, the best SNR at the output by controlling the temperature. Okay, or you can rearrange the amplifier, for example, in order to make it as uh, lower SNR at the output. Okay, nanti kita akan lihat contoh-contoh. Eh? Noise voltage. So noise voltage, uh, uh, it is uh, okay. It is an internal. So noise vol uh, because we have a noise power, we can also calculate noise in terms of voltage. Okay. So figure, this figure shows the equivalent circuit for a thermal noise source. Okay, this is the thermal noise source, okay, which has the uh, voltage source of Vn, okay. It has an internal resistance Ri and connected to the load resistance R, okay. So internal resistance Ri in, in series with the RMS noise voltage Vn. So Vn, uh, Vn over here, Vn is a noise uh, uh, noise source eh, which is connected in series. Okay, yeah, yeah, they're connected in series. For the worst condition, the load resistance is equal to uh, internal resistance. Okay, worst conditions means that uh, to produce the, the highest possible of the noise, uh, the load resistance must be equal to the internal resistance of the source okay therefore the noise voltage across the load is equal to half of the noise source okay pada ketika worst case scenario uh, voltage drop pada load adalah separuh daripada uh, voltage from the noise source okay so that's why vr equal to vn over 2 over here okay vr over Vr is equal to Vn over 2. Okay. And the noise power Pn developed across the load. Okay, load this in here. This is the load uh, of the resistor is equal to KTB. Okay, this is based on the uh, noise power. Remember, Pn is equal to KTB. Okay. So, KTB we already know. But how can we, uh, what can we learn from the voltage perspective, eh? Uh, noise voltage. So let's do the calculations. So based on the noise power, it is equal to KTB. Okay. So uh, if we do the uh, power uh, power equations, eh, remember that uh, power is equal to uh, V square over R. Eh? 
this is if uh, RMS, okay, V square RMS over R, ataupun uh, boleh juga kita buat uh, dalam V dalam sebutan peak value, okay, VP uh, square over 2R. Okay, kalau RMS kita bagikan dengan R, kalau it's a V peak, it's a V, v square over 2R. So it doesn't matter, tidak ada masalah. So dalam kes ini saya melihat dia menggunakan RMS value. Okay, so that's why it is a V square over R. Okay, what is a V square? So V RMS square, V RMS is equal to VN over 2. So this is defined based on the worst case scenario. Okay, yang mana uh, V pada load, eh, voltage pada load adalah separuh daripada noise voltage. Okay, so it is a VN over 2. Okay, during the worst case scenario. Okay. So during the worst case scenario, dia menggunakan during the worst case scenario VN over 2 and then square over R. Okay, so VN square over 4R. So this VN square over 4R is equal to KTB. Okay, so VN square is 4R KTB. Vn is square root of 4R KTB. Ini, eh? So, ini dia punya equation yang akan digunakan. Okay, macam mana dia define? Uh, so, dia menggunakan uh, berdasarkan worst case scenario. Uh, so, Vn is equal to 4R KTB. Okay, so dalam kes ini dia menganggap bahawa load resistance adalah sama dengan internal resistance. Okay. Example 2.2, uh, calculate the thermal noise power available from any resistor at room temperature 290 Kelvin for a bandwidth of 1 megahertz. Calculate also the corresponding noise voltage given R50 ohm. Uh, macam mana ni? So, thermal noise power, N or Pn is equal to KTB. K is a Boltzmann constant 1.38 times 10 power of minus 23 multiplied with the temperature. So given temperature as 290 Kelvin, multiplied with the bandwidth, 1 mega is 1 times 10 power of 6. Okay, ni boleh cuba guna calculator. Eh. Sila keluarkan calculator anda dan cuba kira. Eh. So kalau ada uh, kesilapan atau pertanyaan boleh tanya. Okay, so you are most welcome to ask me questions anytime. Okay, you can interrupt my lecture session anytime, no problem. Boleh tanya soalan. Sangat dialu-alukan. Eh? And then, noise voltage, it is equal to Vn equal to four, square root of 4 R KTB. So, 4 times R, which is 50 ohm, given in the question, times KTB, which is the noise power. Okay, we, we get from here. So, equal to 0 0.895 microvolt. Uh, so kita dapat dia punya noise voltage. And then what? So kalau ni ada soalan boleh terus tanya eh. If there's no question I will move to the next example. Okay. The next example uh, for an electronic device operating at room uh, at a temperature of 17 degrees Celsius uh, with a bandwidth of 10 kilohertz. Determine the thermal noise power in watts and dBm. Nah, okay. So, bila dapat soalan seperti ini, straight away you convert degree Celsius to Kelvin. Okay. So, 17 plus 273. Okay. 273, you're going to get 290 Kelvin. Okay. So, it, it asks about uh, noise power in watt and dBm. So, we're going to use uh, noise power KTB. K times T 290 plus uh, multiplied with bandwidth 10 kilohertz. So we get 4.002 multiplied with 10 power of minus 17 watt. Okay. Nah, kemudian macam mana nak tukar kepada dBm? Nah, ini yang kita belajar dalam chapter 1. How to convert into dBm. Okay. So when we want to convert into dBm, so 10 log of power divide divide with the reference value of 1 milli. Why 1 milli? Because we want to convert into dB milli. Okay, so we, we divide with 1 milli. 
Okay, ni boleh cuba guna calculator. Eh. So it is uh, the answer would be 100 minus, minus 134 dBm. Okay, boleh cuba guna calculator. And then what? The RMS noise voltage for a 100 ohm of internal resistance and 100 ohm of load resistance. So ini dia nak tunjuk yang mana uh, internal resistance dengan load resistance adalah sama. So therefore dia uh, berada pada worst case scenario. Maka sesuai untuk kita menggunakan equation yang ini. Okay. Uh, for your information, uh, in your syllabus, we always make it as uh, load resistant equal to internal resistance. So dalam dalam semua uh, uh, syllabus ini, eh, kita menganggap bahawa uh, load resistance bersamaan dengan internal resistance so that you can use the uh, VN equations. Okay, VN equal to 4R, square root of 4R KTB. Okay, so, so square root of 4 times R. Uh, so what kind of R is this? This is R for the load resistance, which is 100. Okay, dalam kes ini dia adalah 100 ohm berdasarkan load resistance. Okay, so kita tak letak 200 eh. Kita letak 100. If you see from here, okay. So R here is, uh, is about the the resistance at the load side, okay. R di sini adalah R merujuk kepada load resistance. Okay. So for R, R is 100 based on the load resistance times 4 uh, times KTB. Ini yang kita dapat dari sini, eh? 4 times KTB. Okay. So therefore we get 0 0.127 microvolt in RMS. Okay, so of course this is RMS. Sebab tadi pun kita buat pengiraan dalam RMS eh, VRMS square over R. Okay, so this VN is actually in RMS. Okay. Do you have question? If you don't have questions, I will move to the next slide. Okay, kalau tak ada soalan, saya akan teruskan. Uh, Doktor. Uh, ah yeah, ya, silakan. So, thermal noise. Ah uh, kan kalau tengok example 2.2 dengan 2.3, jawapan dia yang what tu? Ah uh, should be nak buat nak round off kan kepada part ke ataupun nak masukkan dia punya part 0.002 tu. Okey, yang sini eh. Yang example yang ni kan? Ha. Yang ni tapi dengan 2. Point, yang example 2.3 kan hmm. doktor letak dia punya titik tuan sekali kan. Okey, kalau tanya saya, saya mencadangkan pelajar letak sehingga tiga titik perpuluhan. Uh, sebabnya uh, lebih 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 tepat. Dalam uh, example, uh, kamu akan lihat uh, banyak yang dibundarkan. Uh, tetapi for the best practice, we we suggest the students to 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 write up to three decimal points. Uh, itu yang terbaik. Macam yang kamu kata tadi 4.002 uh, memang sebaiknya letak 4.002 rather than 4. Okay. So dalam sini kita kita meni, uh, kita melihat uh, ini untuk memudahkan pelajar uh, faham sebenarnya eh, untuk dalam uh, example ini. Boleh eh? So dalam test exam uh, please do your best to make it as uh, up to 3 decimal point because kalau dia ada pengiraan yang lain uh, dia menjadi lebih tepat lah. Kalau you bundarkan awal-awal tu you dah bundarkan nanti jawapan akhir tidak uh, kurang tepat. Oh, okay. Dia mempengaruhi ya, jawapan seterusnya nanti. Ah ya. Okay. It's a good question ya. Eh. Bagus juga you tanya sebab uh, banyak dalam example-example dia bundarkan eh kepada uh, satu nilai which is uh, uh, pada pendapat saya hanya untuk memudahkan proses uh, pemahaman kepada pelajar untuk mengajar. Okay, sebab kalau dia buat point-point-point agak sukar untuk uh, kita buat pengiraan dalam example lah maksudnya just untuk to show the students. But uh, I strongly suggest you to to write up to three decimal point at least. Eh. Itu yang terbaik lah. It's the best practice in test and also final exam. Okay. Ada lagi soalan? Kalau tak ada saya proceed eh. Okay, example 
uh, two resistors of 20 kilo ohm and 50 kilo ohm are at room temperature 290 Kelvin. Okay, for a bandwidth of 100 uh, kilohertz, calculate the thermal noise voltage generated by uh, each resistor and then two resistor in series, two resistor in parallel. So, ada dua resistor eh, sekarang ini. Sama ada kita nak kira noise voltage secara individual, separate, ataupun connected in series, ataupun secara parallel. So, how to do this? Let's look from the first questions. Uh, solutionnya ada di sini eh. So ini kalau kita saya buat garisan eh untuk memisahkan antara dua soalan. So if we want to calculate the uh, the noise voltage eh, for each resistance, okay, we can use the equations uh, Vn1 for the first resistance equal to 4R uh, square root of 4R1 KTB. 4 times 20 kilo ohm for the first resistance times K times T room temperature times B the bandwidth. So, akan dapat 5.66 kali 10 kuasa negatif 6 volt. For the second resistance, square root of 4R2 KTB. So, 4 times R, 50 kilo ohm, times K times T times bandwidth. So, the answer would be 8.95 times 10 power of minus 6 volt. Uh, okay. And then, question number 2. Uh, two resistor in series disambung secara siri. Macam mana? So in this case, we need to uh, ni saya buat garis luar aja. In this case, we need to calculate the R total. Berapakah R total if we uh, combine, if we connect the the, uh, the resistor in series? Okay, we have 20K and 50K. So in series, we need to plus edit together. So 20 kilo ohm plus 50 kilo ohm becomes uh, 70 kilo ohm. So this is the R total. Okay. So R total equal to V, uh, which is a, uh, ini sepatutnya Vn total. Eh? Vr, Vn, uh, Vn total lah senang. Eh? Vn total uh, equal to square root of 4R KTB. Uh, so R here is R total. So 4, uh, 4 times 70K, the R total times k times t times b so we get 1.06 times 10 power of minus 5 volt okay ini kalau secara series connection what if uh, the next question what if uh, the two resistor connected in parallel okay so in parallel first of all you need to find the r total so r total uh, for uh, for parallel connections you can do uh, 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, okay, and then inverse, okay, inverse. So, you're going to get 14.28 uh, kilo ohm, okay. So, ini kalau you kira sepatutnya dia ada inverse di sini, eh. Betul tak? Okay, sepatutnya dia terbalik. So, jadi 14.28 kilo ohm. Ini pun semalam uh, kawan kamu pun ada tanya dalam kelas malam ini sepatutnya terbalik ni eh? dia punya pengiraan. Okay so pendapat saya eh? pendapat saya ini sepatutnya ada minus 1 eh supaya dia inverse eh. So jadi 14.28 kilo ohm. Betul eh? Is it true? Ha. Ada siapa lagi yang masih ragu-ragu dengan parallel connections? Okay. So the 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 total r would be 14.28 kilo ohm okay so dia punya uh, v total vn total adalah square root of 4 r total ktb so 4 times r total 14.29 kilo okay darabkan dengan k darabkan dengan t darabkan dengan b bandwidth so you're going to get 4.78 microvolt. Okay. Do you have question about this? If you don't have questions, I will move to the next slide. Okay, kalau tidak ada soalan. Uh, saya mencadangkan pelajar uh, 
since uh, this is a recording uh, session, eh, so you don't need to to write everything that I wrote here. Instead, uh, the best practice is you use your calculator and try to calculate. Okay. So sometimes, saya kira pun kadang-kadang ada kesilapan sikit. So biasa pelajar betulkan. Okay. Correlated noise. Okay, the next topic is correlated noise. So remember correlated noise uh, is the type of noise that exists only when there is an input signal. Okay, dia adalah jenis, uh, salah, dia juga adalah internal noise sebenarnya yang mana dia cuma wujud sekiranya ada input signal. Okay, so we can divide into two categories which are the uh, harmonic distortion and also intermodulation distortion. Ada dua jenis yang dipelajari di sini eh dalam uh, you punya syllabus. So harmonic distortions uh, is the unwanted harmonics of a signal produced through non-linear amplifications or non-linear mixing. Harmonics are integer multiplies of original signal. Apa maksud dia? So dalam kes ini Kalau kita, uh, kalau saya buat lukis ini, yeah, yeah. let's say this is a transmitter. Okay, so it said that if we have a signal, okay, it's the unwanted harmonics of a signal produced through non-linear amplification. So dalam kes ini, akan ada satu input sahaja ke dalam sistem. Okay, satu input frekuensi sahaja yang akan masuk ke dalam sistem. Okay, dia bukan banyak input. Remember that we can have many inputs. Eh? Kita boleh ada banyak input ke dalam sistem. Tetapi dalam kes ini, untuk satu input, eh, satu input frekuensi, dia akan menghasilkan harmonic distortions. Harmonic distortions, kalau kamu lihat, dia adalah uh, wujudnya small uh, amplitudes, eh? small amplitude of signal in the spectrum. Kalau kita lukis eh, dia punya spectrum, contoh eh. Okay, katalah ini uh, pada frekuensi domain dan ini kamu punya frekuensi eh. This is your signal, single, satu. Okay, dan apabila dia masuk ke dalam sistem maka akan berlakulah mixing dengan uh, dia akanlah berlaku proses mixing di dalam sistem tersebut eh maka wujudnya beberapa harmonik kecil. Eh. Okay. Actually di sini pun ada juga. Eh. Okay. So these are the harmonics. Yang kecil-kecil ini dipanggil sebagai harmonics. Okay. Dia wujud disebabkan oleh non-linear mixing tersebut. Okay. So kalau kita lihat gambar, eh, dia gambarnya di sini. Eh. Bahagian A. Okay, so this is your signal, input signal, which has a single frequency. Okay, and then it produces harmonic distortions. Okay, which is this one. Okay, so where are the location of the harmonics? The location of the harmonics is located at, uh, so this is the second order, two times F1, dua kali daripada F1 tadi, ataupun three times F1, 4 times F1, 5 times F1, 6 and so on. Ada banyak. Okay, bergantung kepada uh, proses mixing itu, dia boleh menghasilkan banyak harmonics, harmonics yang kecil. Yang mana harmonics ini sebenarnya dia tidak diperlukan uh, dan dia boleh di, di, dibuang eh, melalui uh, menggunakan filter. Okay, we can use filter to remove these unwanted harmonics. Okay. So back to here, so there are various degrees of harmonic distortions, second order HD, eh? so ini HD sebenarnya, third order HD. So second order HD is the ratio of RMS amplitude of the second harmonic to the RMS amplitude of the fundamental. So second order HD is equal to V2 dibagikan dengan V fundamental V1. Third order Okay, third order is uh, V3 over V1. So, biasanya kita sebut dalam sebutan percentage. So, we need to multiply with 100%. Okay. 
Okay. And then, uh, so ini bergantung eh. Dia ada third order, fifth order dan seterusnya. Second order yang mana sebenarnya? Kalau kita lihat di sini. Uh, ini adalah second order. Yang kedua eh. Uh, some literature books dia panggil yang pertama ini adalah first harmonic. Uh, saya lebih prefer di, uh, dia sebenarnya bukan harmonic eh. Dia sebenarnya adalah original signal eh. Signal yang asal. Okay, some, uh, ada juga literature books yang menganggap ini sebagai first harmonic. Uh, tak apalah. Uh, sama ada dia first harmonic ataupun original signal. Tetapi remember that harmonics adalah uh, bukan daripada original tu sebenarnya. Eh. Harmonic itu wujud uh, selain daripada original signal tersebut. Eh. So this is the second order yang ini. And this is the third order, fourth order harmonic kalau ada fifth dan seterusnya lah. Okay, dia boleh jadi banyak. Okay. Dan uh, total harmonic distortion is the ratio of quadratic summation of the RMS values of all higher harmonics to the RMS value of the fundamental. Macam mana nak kira total harmonic distortion? Ha, ini ada dia punya pengiraan. Ini eh, percentage of THD V higher over V fundamental multiplied with 100%. Okay, so how to calculate this? First of all, we need to find the V higher is the quadratic summation of the harmonics. Okay, kita akan buat quadratic summations untuk harmonics sahaja. Starting from second order, third order, fourth order until n order. Okay, ini sampai n eh. So, ni ada sebenarnya ada titik-titik-titik lah eh. Sehingga n order. So, kita buat quadratic summations and then square root we get the v higher. Okay, so this v higher is actually equal to uh, v2 square. Uh, kita, we start with the second order. Okay, uh, v3 square plus uh, v4 square uh, plus until uh, vn square. Okay, v fundamental is v1. Okay which is this one eh, fundamental. Okay, nanti akan ada contoh kita akan lihat. Okay. So, seterusnya adalah intermodulation distortion. Uh, nanti kita akan lihat gambar yang kedua eh, gambar B eh. So, what is intermodulation distortions? It is a generation of unwanted sum and difference frequency when two or more signals are amplified in a non-linear device such as large signal amplifier. Okay, so keyword here adalah two or more signals. Uh, means that you have two or more signal to the input at the input side. Okay, ada dua, at least ada dua input masuk ke dalam sistem maka berlakulah intermodulation distortion. Contohnya yang ini, contohnya yang ini ya, eh. gambar aja ini. So, we have the input here, uh, in this example, uh, two input frequencies. Eh? Ada dua input frequency uh, pada F1, F2 dengan dia punya amplitude V1 and V2. So, it goes through the system. Okay, dia masuk ke dalam sistem. Eh? So, dalam kes ini kalau kalau saya buat gambar rajah tadi. Eh? Okay, transmitter for example. So, we have uh, two, two signals. Eh? We have two signals input to the system maka berlakulah intermodulation distortion. Okay. So, this intermodulation distortion produce a significant harmonics at sum and difference frequency. Uh, apa maksud sum and difference? Uh, tadi dia ada sebut eh. Uh, mana tadi? Okay. So, the sum and difference frequencies are called the cross product. Uh, Sum and difference frequencies ini adalah dipanggil sebagai intermodulation distortion. Okay. Dua, dua, uh, ada dua harmonics yang signifikan wujud pada output. Ini adalah uh, uh, harmonics yang signifikan dipanggil sebagai intermodulation distortion. Macam mana bentuknya? Bentuknya ada di sini. Okay. So because of this intermodulation distortion, maka wujudlah cross product. Iaitu yang ini ya. Eh. V sum and also V difference. Apa maksud sum and difference? Sum and difference merujuk kepada lokasi frekuensinya. Okay. 
for some v's uh, for the uh, some uh, frequency some frequency means that here the berlaku pada frequency f1 plus f2 and then for the difference frequency f1 minus f2 uh, itu maksud dia dan uh, ini dipanggil intermodulation distortion kedua-dua ini merupakan intermodulation distortion dia adalah sejenis dia adalah sejenis harmonics yang signifikan yang mengganggu kita punya proses dalam sistem okey tetapi remember sebenarnya okay, sebenarnya ada lagi harmonik harmonik kecil okey ada beberapa harmonik kecil lain eh uh, sebenarnya ada uh, tetapi kita nak fokus kepada dua ini ya eh, yang yang utama ni eh. okey yang mana dipanggil sebagai intermodulation distortion uh, so intermodulation distortion ini uh, juga merupakan masalah Uh, besar apabila kita membuat high level modulation techniques okay. high level modulation techniques perkara-perkara uh, ini adalah masalah besar di dalam sistem yang mana kita perlu design filter yang bagus untuk membuang eh, intermodulation distortion ini okay. this is also a serious issues in the system where we need to design a good filter to remove all of this unwanted harmonics. Okay. Nanti kita akan lihat juga contohnya. So uh, the sum and difference frequencies are called as a cross product. Kedua-dua ini, sum and difference frequencies ini dipanggil sebagai cross product. So macam mana nak kira cross product? Okay. It is calculated as MF1 plus minus NF2. Okay. F and N, F1 and F2 are fundamental frequencies. Uh, dia ada daripada fundamental frequency tadi. Okey, yang tadi eh. Kita ada F1, kita ada F2, fundamental. Okey. So, the cross product, okay, the cross product is equal to MF1 plus minus NF2. Okey, where F1 larger than F2. Must be larger than F2. Why? Otherwise, you will produce negative frequencies, which is wrong. Okay, kita tak nak wujudkan negative frequency. There's no negative frequencies. Okay, so M and N can be positive integers between one and infinity. So M and N boleh jadi sebarang nilai integer daripada satu sehingga infinity. Okay, nanti kita akan lihat contohnya macam mana nak kira cross product ini. Okay. Example 2.5. Uh, so this is regarding the harmonic distortion. Okay, regarding the harmonic distortions. Remember harmonic distortion, we have a single input to the system. Okay, hanya ada satu input frequency ke dalam system. Okay, so the first question, determine the second, third and twelfth uh, 12 harmonics for a 1 kilohertz of repetitive wave. Apa maksud dia? Soalan pertama, soalan pertama dia tanya uh, di manakah lokasi harmonik? Okay. Di manakah lokasi harmonik untuk 1 kilohertz of signal? Where is the location in the in the spectrum? Okay, so when we want to to find out the the location, okay, ni saya kita tengok dulu ya, eh, yang first ya. Eh. So the second harmonics is located at two times the fundamental frequency which is two times one kilo. Okay, kita menggunakan integer dua. Harapkan dengan kita punya fundamental frequency one kilohertz. So it is located at two kilohertz. The third harmonics located at three times fundamental. So three times one kilo. It is located at one kilohertz. 12 harmonics located at 12 times fundamental, 12 times 1 kilo. So it is located at 12 kilohertz. Nah, ini di mana dia punya lokasi dalam uh, dalam spectrum eh. F eh. So we have here is uh, F, F1. This is uh, 2F1. This is 3F1. Dan seterusnya sehingga tadi apa? 12F1 eh. So dia terlet, uh, lokasinya ada di uh, dinyatakan di sini. Uh, 
Okay. And then what? Percent order. So now baru dia tanya tentang harmonic distortion. Percent of second order, third order and total harmonic distortion. So dia tanya second order, third order and THD. Okay. If you are given uh, the, the amplitude of the uh, fundamental frequency is 8 volt. Okay, 8 volt for the fundamental second order, which is, uh, this is a V1, eh? this is a V1, this is a V2, this is, uh, and this is a V3 for the third order. Okay, so now you want to find the uh, second HD and also third HD and also the THD. Uh, dia tak tanya 12 eh. Uh, dia tak tanya 12 harmonic. So uh, you can assume that uh, the first and second questions are not uh, actually the continuous eh, from, the, from, from the first question. Okay, dia tidak continuous daripada first question. So you see that the first order HD uh, ni dia nak buat dalam sebutan percent. Okay, so second order is second order harmonic distortion is equal to V2 over V1 multiplied with 100%. So 0 0.2 over 8 volt is 0 0.2 volt over 8 volt multiplied with 100%. So you're going to get 2.5% for the second order. For the third order, it is equal to V3 divide over V1 multiplied with 100%. So it is 0 0.1 volt. Divide with 8 volt multiplied with 100%. Okay, so 1.25%. Okay. Uh, so it's straightforward. Eh? So percent THD. So since this question only asks about second and third. Okay, dia tak tanya 12. Eh? So we only include second and 12 only. In this example. Okay. Sebab soalan yang kedua macam saya, uh, saya katakan tadi, dia tidak continuous eh, dia bukan continuous daripada yang sebelumnya, yang soalan A. Okay, so this question only asks about second order, third order and also THD. Okay, so when you want to calculate the THD, so this is a V2 square plus V1 square, so V, sorry, V2 square plus V3 square and then square root. And so ini adalah V higher. Okay, divide with the V fundamental, it will multiply with 100%. So you get total harmonic distortion is equal to 2.795%. Ah, ni cara penyeraannya eh. So ada soalan nak tanya? Kalau tidak ada soalan, saya akan proceed eh. Example 2.6. So this is related to the intermodulation distortion when we have two or more inputs okay but in this example you are given two input frequencies 3k and 8 kilohertz determine the first three harmonics present in the output for each input frequency soalan pertama dia tanya uh, berapakah uh, di manakah lokasi harmonics yang di yang dihasilkan oleh setiap input frekuensi ini. Setiap input frekuensi ini, apabila dia masuk ke dalam sistem, maka dia akan wujudkan beberapa harmonics. Okay, ini belum cerita cross product, eh? bukan? Eh? Kita nak tahu di manakah lokasi harmonics. Macam yang soalan pertama, uh, macam soalan example uh, 2.5. Okay, we want to know the location of the small harmonics. Okay, as I drawn in the previous graph, eh? macam saya lukiskan dalam graph ini. Sebenarnya ada beberapa harmonik kecil lain yang wujud disebabkan oleh dua input frekuensi ini. Uh, we want to know about this, eh? this small harmonics, the location of this small harmonics. Okay, so let's look this example. So here you will see that uh, each of the input frequency will produce harmonics. So what are the harmonics? What, what are the location of the harmonics in the spectrum? Di manakah kedudukannya? Okay, so let's look from uh, the first questions. It said that each frequency 
each input frequency will produce harmonics. Okay, so you see that for three kilohertz, kita akan pergi one by one, eh? three kilohertz and then eight kilohertz. For the three kilohertz, uh, the the original frequency is three k, and then the harmonics, second harmonics, two times signal frequency, two times three, six kilohertz. Third harmonics for the third. Uh, Third harmonic for 3 kilohertz is located at 3 times original frequency, 3 times 3K, so you get 9 kilohertz. So inilah dia punya location untuk harmonics produced by the input frequency 3 kilohertz. What about input frequency 8 kilohertz? The harmonic is, uh, so the first one is a fundamental frequency, 8K. The second harmonics is located at 2 times original signal, 2 times 8. It is located at 16 kilohertz. Third harmonics produced by 8 kilohertz input is equal to 3 times 8 kilohertz, which is 24 kilohertz. So, kalau kita lihat di sini, ada wujudnya uh, harmonics, harmonics ini. Eh. Ini dia tunjukkan sehingga third harmonics. Okay, dia tunjukkan sehingga third harmonic because the question asks up to three harmonics. Kalau dia sampai 10 harmonic, uh, so you can kira sehingga 10. Okay, so you just multiply uh, the, the number of harmonics. Eh? If third harmonics, you multiply with three. If fourth harmonic, multiply with four. Fifth harmonic, multiply with five and so on. Sehingga lah N. That means you multiply N with F. Okay, berapa dia punya uh, uh, harmonics yang keberapa? N is the, the number of harmonics. Okay, so this is the first question. Okay, the next question asks about cross product frequencies. Uh, this is the intermodulation distortion. We want to find the, the, the two sum and difference frequencies. Okay, given M and N, 1 and 2. So remember cross product is MF1 plus minus NF2, okay? And you are given M equal to, uh, dalam, in this example, actually M equal to 1 and 2. N equal to 1 and 2. Nah, soalan ni dia mengelirukan sedikit. Eh? Uh, tetapi sebenarnya M sama dengan 1 dan 2. N juga sama dengan 1 dan 2. So, ada dua value untuk setiap M and N. Okay. So, let's look at the solution. Okay. So, you see that in this case, we need to do a better to, to do a table. Okay. Sebaiknya buat table. So, memandangkan setiap N, M dan N ada dua values. So, better we do uh, we uh, we do a table. That means that there's going to be four combinations. Two times two, eh. So, dalam kes ini, the first one is M equal to 1, N equal to 1, M equal to 1, N equal to 2. And then change M equal to 2, N equal to 1, M1, M equal to 2, N equal to 2. Uh, macam ni. So, ada empat, uh, empat uh, kemungkinan eh, yang berlaku. Eh. So, let's look at the first one. Eh. The first one. So if M1, N1, so therefore the cross product is located at 8 plus minus 3. Okay, 8 minus 3, the difference frequency, 5 kilohertz. 8 plus 3, sum frequencies, which is 11 kilohertz. Okay, so ada dua, ada dua uh, sum and difference. Eh? And then let's look number 2. Uh, M equal to 1, N equal to 2. So that means this is 8 kilohertz plus minus 3 times 2, eh? which is 6. Okay. So 8 minus 6, difference frequency, 2 kilohertz. 8 plus 6, 14 kilohertz for the sum frequency. Okay. And then for the third row, N, uh, M equal to 2, N equal to 1. So this is 8 multiplied with 2 actually. Eh? So 16. 16 plus minus 3. So for the difference frequency 16 minus 3. So it is 13 kilohertz for the difference frequency. 16 plus 3, 19 kilohertz for the sum frequency. Okay. 
and then m equal to 2 n equal to 2 so this is 8 multiplied with 2 this is 3 multiplied with 2 okay kerana kita diberikan dua frekuensi eh 8k dan juga 3k so we we multiplied uh, 8 times 2 3 times 2 so therefore 16 plus minus 6 so the difference frequency is 16 minus 6 10 kilohertz 16 plus 6 22 kilohertz so dia straightforward eh, untuk mengira dia punya cross product ok so ada soalan nak tanya yang ni so ini dia nak tunjukkan uh, tentang cross product tadi eh. ok uh, sum and difference eh. ok so if there's no questions I will move to the next slide ok saya akan teruskan eh Signal to noise ratio, uh, ini yang menarik ni, okay, SNR. So this is also related to your assignment, okay, and of course uh, test and final exam, uh, there are going to be a lot of question about this uh, topic. Eh? Akan ada soalan-soalan dari -soalan topik yang ni. So signal to noise ratio, uh, we want to measure the signal power over the noise power, okay signal power over the noise power so you see that here s over n signal power over noise power so ps over pn so both of this in term of what eh? ps in what pn in what so when you divide both of these so it becomes a unitless eh? okay what dibagikan dengan what so dia adalah satu menghasilkan value tanpa unit Okay, dia adalah nisbah, ratio. Okay. And we can also express in term of decibel, uh, signal to noise ratio in decibel, so 10 log PS over PN. Okay, ni dalam sebutan PB. So normally in the practical, uh, in the practical world, eh, okay, di luar sana, dalam practical, uh, dalam practical work, eh, apabila kamu bekerja sebagai uh, engineer di luar so biasanya kita apabila kita sebut SNR biasanya kita akan sebut dalam sebutan decibel biasanya okey kebiasaannya SNR ini disebut dalam sebutan decibel okey so uh, the input and output resistance of the amplifier receiver or network being available are equal ha. so Uh, SNR ini juga boleh di, dibuat dalam sebutan voltage means that uh, signal voltage over noise voltage boleh juga ha, tapi macam mana caranya ok dia ada cara ada caranya eh. so maknanya signal to noise ratio in decibel so we change power into uh, voltage ok remember that uh, remember that uh, here macam tadi ya eh, power Power equations, VRMS square over R, or you can say that V peak square over to R. So it doesn't matter. You nak guna yang ini atau yang ini tidak ada masalah. Eh. So dalam kes ini uh, VS, eh. so that means uh, this is actually like this. Eh. So VS square. Let's say I use a peak amplitude. Eh. Katalah saya menggunakan peak amplitude. Okay. So divide with 2R. And then Vn divide with 2R. Okay, so ini, uh, sorry, ini square. Square. Okay, so it said that uh, dalam case ini kita menganggap uh, the, the, the input and output resistance are the same, are equal. Okay, that means we can cancel out this resistance part. Okay, kita boleh buang. So maka dia jadi Vs square over Vn square ataupun Vs over Vn square okay and then we do 10 log 10 log of Vs over Vn square so dia jadi 20 log Vs over Vn so ni dua ini pindah ke depan eh so maka jadi 20 okay so angka 20 ni bukan magic number eh so dia jadi disebabkan oleh adanya kuadratik ini eh 
So 20 log Vs over Vn. Okay, Vs in signal voltage, Vn is noise voltage. Okay. Example 2.7. Uh, so for an amplifier with an output signal power of 10 watt, okay, signal power 10 watt, and output noise power of uh, 0 0.01 watt determine the signal to noise ratio. Signal to noise ratio is equal to uh, signal power 10 watt divided with the noise power 0 0.01 watt. It is equal to 1000. Okay, so this is a unitless parameter. Uh, class, uh, perhatikan eh. This unitless, you tak perlu tulis dalam exam. Eh? We, we know that if there's no unit, that means it is a unitless parameter. Uh, ada juga sebagian pelajar yang dia buat unitless. Eh? Dia tidak salah tetapi dia agak, uh, agak lucu sedikit eh, kalau kita tulis unitless. Uh, we understand that if you just write 1000 without unit, it is a unitless. Okay. So, dalam test, dalam final exam atau di mana-mana saja, uh, Tak perlu tulis unit, maknanya dia adalah unitless. Kita faham. Okay. And then uh, in decibel, 10 log 1000. So it becomes 30 dB. Ha, ni cuba eh, guna calculator. 10 log 1000 mesti dapat 30 dB. Okay. And then what? For an amplifier with the output signal voltage of 4 volt, an output noise voltage is 0 0.05 volt and input and output resistance is 50 ohm. Input and output is the same. So, uh, therefore, the SNR is... Uh, so, dalam kes ini, kalau you lihat, dia menggunakan RMS punya uh, equations eh, for the power. So, therefore, Vs square over R, Vn square over R. So, both R are the same, so you can cancel out. Okay? So, 4 square over 0 0.05 square so dia jadi 640,000 eh 640,000 and then in term of decimal 10 log of 640,000 so you're going to get 58 decibel very simple straightforward okey boleh cuba eh guna calculator eh practice sekarang Okay, takut nanti kalau you tak tekan sekarang, takut nanti you uh, tidak biasa pada ketika test dan juga final. Okay. Ah, ni dia. The favorite topic. Uh, of course, ini akan keluar dalam test dan final. For sure, akan keluar. Okay. So, noise factor uh, and noise figure are the figures of merit to indicate how much of signal deteriorate when it passed through a circuit or a series of circuits. Uh, so, ini adalah uh, parameter penting eh. dan, dan juga ini juga berkait dengan you punya assignment eh. Nanti kita akan lihat juga eh. sebab you punya assignment tu adalah cascaded system eh. Okay. So, noise factor is equal to input SNR over output SNR. So, this sebenarnya adalah SNR I over SNR O. Uh, biasa kita buat output over input. Eh? Uh, tetapi yang ini adalah input over output. Okay. Noise figure is the logarithmic of noise factor. 10 log F. Eh? So, this is actually F. Eh? Ini adalah F. Okay. So 10 log F, so you get this in term of decibel, dB. Okay. So ideally, ideally we want uh, we want the system to have uh, to produce a, as minimum as possible for the parameter of F and also NF. Okay. So cara teorinya kita inginkan nilai F ini sekecil yang mungkin. F dan juga NF. Eh? We want the value of F and NF to be as minimum as possible. So what is the minimum value? The minimum value is F equal to 1. That means SNR I, sorry, SNR I equal to SNR O. Ah. SNR I sama dengan SNR O. Ah, itu adalah uh, terbaik. Okay. 
terbaik, which is a perfect system. And if it is equal to one, okay, ten log, ten log one, it produce zero dB. So actually, we want our system to produce noise factor and noise figure uh, as close as possible towards f equal to one. Kita inginkan kita punya sistem ini mempunyai ataupun menghasilkan noise factor menghampiri nilai satu. Uh, F equal to one is a perfect system. Eh? It is not happen in the real world. Okay, so ini cuma theoretical concept. Eh? F equal to one and F equal to zero, uh, which is a perfect system. So in real world, it is not like that. Okay, but theoretically, theoretically we want the system to produce F towards one, seminimum yang mungkin. Paling rendah adalah satu. Okay. So that's the idea. Kalau dia lagi besar, maknanya noise itu lagi besar, which will disturb, uh, which will degrade the quality of the uh, signal. Dia akan mengganggu kualiti signal yang dihasilkan. Okay. Okay. So this is for the ideal and non-ideal case. So for this, I will refer to the next slide, which is this one. Eh? So ini sama dengan slide yang ini. Eh? So I lebih uh, prefer terangkan yang ini lebih mudah. Okay, so let's look one by one. Kita perlu lihat satu per satu. Eh? Okay, so the first uh, uh, the first system, eh, part A, it is an ideal noiseless device. Apa maksud noiseless device? That means the device itself does not produce additional noise. Bermakna noise itu cuma dari luar sahaja. Kita tak boleh buang noise. Eh. Noise itu sentiasa ada. Noise sentiasa ada. Tetapi dalam kes ini, the system itself does not produce additional noise. Sistem itu sendiri tidak menghasilkan additional noise. So noise itu cuma daripada luar. Okay. So you see that here, from the input, we have a input signal power, input noise power. So it goes to the system, so this is an ideal noiseless amplifier which has a gain of AP. Uh, and this is an ideal uh, amplifier which does not produce additional noise. So what happened at the output? Apa berlaku pada output? So pada output, maka output signal power akan berganda. Output noise power also will, will increase due to the gain. The amplifier has a gain. Amplifier itu dia ada gain. So maka gain of the amplifier, okay, amplifier ini will increase the signal power and also will increase the noise power. Okay, so what happened is that you see that from here, S out is equal to gain multiplied with the input signal power. Noise output is equal to gain of the amplifier multiplied with the input noise. So what happened? You see that secara nisbahnya, for the ratio, we get SI over NI, which is equal to the input SNR. So maknanya SNR output sama dengan SNR input. Uh, so this is for the ideal case. Okay. And let's look for the non-ideal, the second case. Amplifier with internally generated noise. That means this amplifier produce additional noise in the system. Okay, so let's look here. So we have an input signal power SI, uh, input noise power NI. It goes through the system. So what happened is that uh, the system has a gain of AP, power gain, and then it will generate additional noise, which is ND. So what happened at the output? For the output, uh, output signal power is equal to gain multiplied with the input signal power. What happened to the noise? Noise calculation would be, output noise would be gain multiplied with input noise plus internally generated noise. Uh, so, ini dia bagi yang sini, bagian sini dia bagi dengan AP eh. So, dia buang uh, parameter AP. So, Cukup sekadar yang ini eh. 
So APSI divide with APNI plus ND. Okay. So remember, this is plus. Okay. We plus with the additional noise. So you see that here, due to this uh, internally generated noise, what happened is that SNRO becomes less than SNRI. Okay. Disebabkan adanya internally generated noise ini, maka SNRO menjadi lebih kecil daripada SNR input. Okay. Dia, dah, dia sudah tidak sama. Okay. Output menjadi lebih kecil berbanding dengan input. Okay. So ini boleh faham, eh? ini dia punya theoretical concept. So this is for single single uh, device, for single device. What happen if we have many devices? Uh, seperti ini ya. Eh? So if we have more than one devices, uh, the way we calculate the total noise factor, we need to use a certain formula, which is what we call as a freeze formula to get the uh, total noise factor. Okay, freeze formula ini digunakan untuk mendapatkan nilai total noise factor for cascaded system. Okay, ada beberapa amplifier. Tadi you lihat cuma satu saja. Macam mana kalau ada lebih daripada satu? Like this. Okay, seperti ini. So, you see that, uh, look at the picture. So, the the example here uh, mention up, up to three amplifiers. Okay, biasanya kita tanya sehingga tiga saja eh, dalam test exam. Uh, ditanya sehingga tiga amplifier saja sudah memadai. Okay, so you see that here amplifier one, amplifier two, amplifier three. Eh. So, ini actually uh, dia letak M di sini. Eh. So, ini kalau dilihat sebenarnya sehingga tiga. Eh. Okay, up to three. If you have more, up to N lah. Okay, if you have more Okay, if you have more more amplifiers, up to n amplifier. Okay, so this amplifier has gain. Okay, has gain a, and also has noise figure. Noise figure. If you want to convert into f, you can do uh, anti log. Eh? Anti log of n f, you will get f. Okay, anti log of this n f, you will get f two. Anti log, you get f. So, since we have the gain, we have the we have the we know the gain of each amplifier, we know the noise factor of each amplifier, then we can calculate the total noise factor. How to do that? Okay, so let let's look at the equations. The total noise factor is equal to noise factor of the first amplifier plus noise factor of the second amplifier minus one divide with gain from the first amplifier. So tadi eh, ini tadi mula-mula dia masuk ke sini and then move to the next one. Okay, so so the gain from the first one calculated for the second part. Eh? So F dua minus one divide with the gain from first amplifier, the previous. Okay, and then move to the third amplifier, which is F3 minus F1. And the gain is accumulated. Bring forward. So here is F3 minus 1 divide with A1 multiplied with A2, which is the gains from previous amplifiers. Okay, so kalau you ada tiga cascaded amplifier sahaja, cukup sekadar ini. Enough. Stop here. But if you have more than three cascaded amplifiers, you need to plus again, eh? plus until n amplifiers. Fn, multi, Fn minus one, divide with A1, multiplied with A2, multiplied with A3, multiplied with A4, 5, 6, and so on, until An minus one, until the previous. Okay, until the previous. So this will produce the total noise factor, which is without a unit, no unit. 
Uh, okay. So if you see from here, okay, kalau dilihat di sini ya, eh, kalau kita nak menghasilkan a noise factor yang paling rendah, okay, if you want to to produce uh, the least noise factor, you see that from these equations, kita boleh agak eh, bahawa parameter yang pertama ini memainkan peranan yang besar. Why? You see that if the first parameter is small, then the output is becomes small. If the first parameter is larger, besar, maka outputnya juga akan besar. So dalam freeze equation ini, parameter pertama itu memainkan peranan yang sangat penting. Okay? So you see that from here, if we want to produce uh, the least noise factor, that means we must make sure that the first stage amplifier has the minimum noise factor. Okay, semasa kita menyusun amplifier itu, kita kena pastikan bahawa pada peringkat yang pertama, amplifier mestilah yang mempunyai noise factor yang paling kecil. Okay. When we choose the amplifier, sorry, I said what? Yeah. yeah. So when we choose the ampli when we when do when we do the arrangement of amplifiers, okay, when we do the arrangement of amplifiers, we must make sure that the first amplifier has the minimum noise factor, followed by amplifier that has the second least amplifier and so on dan seterusnya okey bukan disebabkan oleh gain yang besar bukan eh sebabkan dalam freeze equation ni kita nampak kalau f yang pertama itu kecil maka dia akan menghasilkan nilai f yang kecil eh pada akhirnya so the first part is very important Nah, so ini pun pernah ditanya uh, many times eh, in the test and exam uh, how to produce the the, the least uh, total noise factor. Okay, dengan cara mengubah suai susunan amplifier. So uh, the the answer is that uh, we need to choose amplifier with the least noise factor to be at the first stage, followed by uh, second least uh, noise factor third place and so on dan dia uh, break daripada noise factor yang kecil sehingga noise factor yang besar ya akhir sekali noise factor yang paling besar lah supaya kita boleh menghasilkan total noise factor yang minimum at the end of the system okay total akan menjadi minimum okay so uh, here uh, so f total sorry F total here and then uh, F1 is a noise factor for each amplifier, A is a power gain for each amplifier. And be careful about this. Change unit of all noise factor F and power gains from dB to unitless before insert into the freeze equation. Apa maksud dia? Uh, so ini kesilapan pelajar eh. Common mistakes by the students. Remember, okay, remember all parameters inside the freeze equation must be unitless. Jangan masukkan parameter dalam sebutan decibel. Be careful. Okay, especially yang bahagian gain tu eh, A eh. Biasanya dalam soalan kita berikan gain dalam decibel. What you need to do is you need to convert into unitless. Then you can use the freeze equation. Remember that. Okay. Remember that all parameters inside the freeze formula must be unitless parameter. Okay, kalau dia dB, you can convert kepada unitless terlebih dahulu. Okay, be careful. Okay, saya dah ingatkan eh, banyak kali. Because this is a common mistake until the final exam. Even dalam final exam pun, masih banyak pelajar yang melakukan kesilapan seperti ini. Dia main sumbat ya, decibel dimasukkan semua ya, habis. 
uh, if this is wrong, that means the next calculation will be wrong and boleh kata you tak dapat markah lah ataupun satu dua markah saja untuk satu soalan. Uh, so you need to be careful about this. Eh? Uh, so be careful about this. Uh, all parameters must be unitless inside the freeze equation. Okay. Example 2.9. Okay, so I will explain uh, all examples. So if you have questions, uh, please interrupt me. Eh? Ask me questions. Okay. So example 2.9. The input signal to telecommunication receiver consists of 100 microwatt. Uh, so this is the input. Okay, SI uh, of the signal power and one microwatt of noise power. So ini gambar raja receiver. Lah. So I would strongly suggest to students if you get this kind of questions, uh, there's no picture. Uh, so it is better for you to draw a simple diagram for yourself. Okay, tak kira lah gambar itu. Uh, gambar tak perlu cantik-cantik. Eh? Just, uh, just for you to understand. Okay, so now the input here is SI and then we have NI here. Okay, it is given as 100 micro. Here is 1 micro, micro for the noise. And then uh, the receiver contributes an additional. So it has, it contributes an uh, additional noise which is 80 microwatt okay and it has a power gain ap equal to uh, 20 db compute the input snr the output snr and the receiver noise figure so dia tanya input snr eh, pada bahagian input okay snr i then dia tanya snr o Okay, SNRO. Dan dia tanya berapakah total noise. Okay, dia tanya berapakah uh, noise factor. No, sorry, noise figure. Berapakah noise figure. Okay, so the way we calculate, first of all, uh, input SNR yang paling mudah. Uh, SI over NI. So, uh, 100 micro divide over 1 micro. So, you get 100. 100. Nah, ini tak perlu tulis lah, unitless ni. And then uh, input SNR in dB to 10 log 100, you get 20 decibel. So, selesai yang pertama. Uh, the second question asks about uh, output SNR. So, that means you need to find SO, you need to find NO. So, I would suggest you to find SO first. Eh? Ini yang paling mudah. SR is equal to AP times input signal power. So, 100. Daripada mana 100? So 100 is from 20 dB eh. From 20 dB if you convert mula-mula uh, bahagi 10 kemudian buat anti-log. Okay so anti-log of 2. Okay sebab kita bahagi 10 so dia akan jadi 100. Ha, ni boleh cuba eh guna calculator. So 100 multiplied with 100 uh, micro. Ha, perhatikan eh plus dia tak guna 20 dB eh di sini. Ha. Dalam calculation ini, kita tidak boleh menggunakan decibel untuk darab. Proses darab tidak boleh menggunakan decibel. So, becomes a 1 times 10 power of 2 watt. Okay. And then what? How to calculate an out? Output noise. Output noise is equal to uh, internally generated noise plus the gain multiplied with the input noise. Okay, this is the internally generated noise by the amplifier plus gain multiplied with input noise. Input noise, 1 microwatt. So it becomes 1.8 times 10 power of 4 watt. Okay, now we can do the ratio. Okay, so SO, SNRO, eh? SNRO equal to S out over N out. So this is uh, 1 times... Uh, 10 power of minus 2 for the SO divide with NO. So we get 55.56. In decibel, 10 log 55.56, we get 17.45 dB. Okay. So perhatikan eh, kelas. Uh, soalan dia tidak spesifik eh. Uh, meminta kamu bertanya, uh, meminta kamu mengira sehingga dB. Okay. Soalan ni tidak spesifik. Uh, so, in this case, jika you jawab sehingga 100 pun dah memadai. Eh? Okay, sebab soalan tak tanya dalam decibel. Okay. Tetapi saya lihat uh, soalan ini diteruskan sehingga decibel. 
uh, kerana kita nak membiasakan pelajar untuk mengira dalam DB sebab SNR in practical world uh, memang disebut dalam sebutan decibel. Okay, tetapi apabila kita melihat dalam perspektif uh, test and exam, you perlu baca soalan, soalan ini tidak spesifik kepada DB. So if you answer up to 100, you get the full marks, no problem. Okay, tidak ada masalah. So this is 17.45 dB. Okay. And then what? The question asks about a uh, noise figure. So in order to find noise figure, we need to calculate a noise factor. Okay. So this is a noise factor, SNRI over SNRO. And then 10 log of F. Okay, 10 log of F. So SNRI is 100. So this is from, from here, 100. SNRO is 55.56. Okay, 55.56. So we get uh, 2.55 dB. Uh, perhatikan eh, kelas. Uh, ini bukan dB eh, di sini. Uh, ini dua ni parameter ni adalah unitless parameter. Jangan bahagi nilai dB. Okay, nilai dB tidak boleh dibahagikan. Okay, when you want to do the division process, do it in unitless parameter. Okay, then you do the 10 log. Barulah you dapat decibel. Okay. Another example. Uh, ni kalau tak ada soalan, saya akan proceed. Eh. If you have question, please interrupt me, ask me questions. Okay. Uh, hello, doctor. Yeah, silakan. Uh, sorry, I missed out just now. For yeah. the output signal, uh, the formula is SL equal to AP times SI, right? Yeah, this one. Uh, eh? The AP, how, how, how can I get 100? Okay, so AP is uh, here, the, it given in the question 20 decibel. Okay, 20 decibel, how to convert into a unitless parameter? Uh, because it is actually like this, eh? 10 log X becomes a 20 dB. Okay, so log X is equal to 2. Okay, so X is equal to NT log of 2. Uh, ni cuba guna calculator, anti-log of 2. So, anti-log of 2, you're going to get 100. Uh, so, 100 is from here, 20 dB. Okay, thank you, Dr. Understand. Okay. So, 100 is from the 20 dB. So, this is actually from the 20 dB. Okay. Ada lagi soalan? Boleh tanya, eh? no problem. Uh -huh. So, if you don't have question, I will move to the next example. Okay, kalau tak ada soalan, saya akan teruskan. Okay. Example 210. For a non-ideal amplifier and the following parameters determine. Okay. So, this is a non-ideal amplifier given uh, input signal power, SI, uh, input noise power, NI, power gain 1 million, oh besar, eh? AP. Okay. So uh, for your information, eh, class, uh, you can just write A, no problem. Eh? It doesn't matter, uh, you, you don't need, uh, if you want, you can write A, B, or you can write A, we understand that this is a gain or uh, attenuations. We understand that, no problem. Okay. So kalau saya nak cepat, saya biasa tu buat menggunakan A, tidak ada masalah. Okay. So internal noise, ND is 6 uh, microwatt. Okay, ND is 6 microwatt. So calculate the SNR in dB, ah, perhatikan eh, dia specific cakap dalam decibel. So you kena cari dalam decibel. Output SNR dalam decibel. Noise factor and noise figure. Uh, okay. And for your information, long time ago, eh, uh, we, we asked students uh, in the test uh, this question, exactly the same. Okay. Uh, long before the COVID, eh, long time ago. Uh, so face to face masih tu eh, kita tanya soalan uh, daripada example ini eh, kita ambil sebiji sama eh, exactly the same okay we give to the students and uh, surprisingly many students are unable to answer and also many students able to answer okay ada banyak yang dapat jawab ada banyak yang tak dapat jawab walaupun nilai everything is the same okay walaupun semuanya sama okay so uh, of course, uh, for, for, for now, because this is uh, online, you can open book, you can 
you can find uh, from the notes. So uh, the question will be will not be like this. Okay, okay. So alanya lain sedikit lah. Okay. So okay, the first question input S N R. So first of all, input S N R is S I over N I. Okay. So S I is given two times ten power of minus ten. Divide over no input noise two two times ten power of minus eighteen. So you get one time ten power of eight. So this is a unitless parameter. Okay, dia tidak ada unit. Ini tak perlu tulis eh. So kita faham lah tidak ada unit. And then uh, input S N R in dB dalam decibel. Okay. So this is uh, ten log of uh, one times ten power of eight. So we get eighty decibel. Ini cuba guna kalkulator boleh dapat tak? Lapan puluh decibel. Sepuluh log satu kali sepuluh kuasa lapan. You akan dapat lapan puluh dB. So perhatikan eh kelas uh, daripada kita tulis panjang-panjang macam ni eh banyak macam ni eh angkanya satu kali sepuluh kuasa lapan. Kalau dalam decibel dia jadi lapan puluh. So decibel, the good thing about decibel is that we can make a larger values of parameter becomes smaller. So that easy to do the, uh, the easy uh, easy for us to do the calculations. Kalau dalam dB sebenarnya, uh, dB kalau kita ada proses darab dia akan jadi tambah. Uh, ini yang saya terangkan dalam chapter one sebelum ini. Eh. Uh, you, so you need to learn about chapter one about the decibel. Uh, calculations eh, for the decibel conversions, uh, decibel summation, something like that. You need to understand that. Okay. So uh, since the last week tidak ada video, tidak ada class, so you can lihat saya punya video. Okay. So uh, the second questions ask about the output SNR. So output SNR. First of all, I would suggest you to find S out. S out equal to APSI. So the gain is one million. Ini tadi diberikan ya, one million multiplied with input signal power, which is two times ten power of minus ten. So become two times ten power of minus four what? Okay, and then so S out. Okay, now we find the N out. N out is equal to internally generated noise, which is six micro. Plus gain multiplied with input noise, so gain is one million multiplied with input noise, so it becomes eight times ten power of minus twelve. Okay, and then in term of decibel, in term of decibel, ten log of S O over N O. Okay, so you get seventy four decibel. Okay, seventy-four decibel. Yang tadi, ya ini eighty decibel. Yang now become seventy-four decibel. Okay. So in order to find the next question, eh, in order to find the noise factor. Okay, noise factor. Noise factor is S N R I over S N R O. Okay. So this is one times ten power of minus one times ten power of eight. Divide with twenty five million. Twenty five million dari mana? Twenty five million dari pada sini ya. S N R O. Okay. Because if you divide this S O over N O, you will get twenty five millions. Okay. Dua dibagikan dengan lapan, so dapat dua puluh lima lah. Kosong poin dua lima, kosong poin dua lima. Okay, kosong kosong poin dua lima. Okay, sorry, dua bagi lap. Kosong poin dua lima kalikan dengan sepuluh kuasa lapan, so jadi twenty sepuluh kuasa lapan, so jadi twenty five million. Okay, twenty five million from here. So you get F. You find the F, you get four. Okay. So from here, you can calculate the noise figure. Ten log a ten log of four, you get six point zero two decibel. Okay. So perhatikan class, berhati-hati di sini ya. Don't put dB value over here. Okay, jangan letak decibel value. Be careful about that. Okay. 
if you don't have questions, uh, I will move to the next slide. Eh. Kalau tak ada soalan, saya akan teruskan. Okay. So, example 2.11. Uh, for three cascaded amplifier stages, uh, each with noise figure of 3 dB and power gains of 10 dB determine the total noise figure. Uh, so, matlamatnya adalah untuk mencari NF, noise figure. Okay. So, you are given three cascaded amplifiers. Okay. Three cascaded amplifiers. Like this. So, one, two, three. Okay. And each has a noise figure of 3 dB. So, dia berikan setiap ni, dia mempunyai NF1 sama dengan 3 dB. NF, NF2 sama dengan 3 dB. NF3 sama dengan 3 dB. Semua sama. Okay. And the power gains for all amplifier is 10 dB. So, A1 equal to 10. A2 equal to 10 dB. Eh? So, ni dB. Eh? 10 dB. A3 is equal to 10 dB. Uh, okay. Determine the total noise figure. So, of course, if you want to find the noise figure, first of all, we need to find a noise factor. Okay. So, how to find the noise factor? Sekejap, eh? Hello, no. No. Uh, no. Okay, nanti, nanti. Okay. So we want uh, first of all we need to find the F parameter. Okay. So how to find the F parameter uh, using the freeze equations, eh, which is the uh, uh, F1 uh, in eh, freeze using these freeze equations. So in order to find, in order to use the freeze equation, we need to find the all the parameters inside the freeze equations. How much is the F? How much is the gain for the unitless parameter? So can you find a unitless parameter? So gain A1 sama dengan A2 sama dengan A3, anti log of 10 dB. So macam mana nak anti log of 10 dB? So macam tadi saya terangkan 10 log X sama dengan 10 dB. Log X equal to uh, 10, sorry, log x equal to 1, x equal to anti log of 1, you're going to get 10. Okay, to sebab dapat 10. And then uh, anti log of uh, 3 dB, okay, 10 log uh, x equal to 3 dB, okay, log x equal to uh, 0.3, x anti log of 0.3, yeah. Uh, so ni of course dia ada perpuluhan eh. So anti log of uh, 0.3 you akan dapat 1.995. Tu sebab dia bundarkan kepada 2. Uh, ni kalau dah 999 macam ni uh, bolehlah kalau you nak bundarkan kepada 2 tidak ada masalah. Okay. So if you see from here uh, 2 uh, F1 plus F2 minus F1 plus um, over A1 plus F3 minus 1 over A1 A2. Masukkan saja dalam equation. So, 2 tambah 2 tolak 1 bahagi 10 gain from the first amplifier and then 2 and then this is F3 eh. F3 minus 1 uh, multiplied with A1, A2. Okay, yang tadi ni A1 eh. Okay. So, you get 2.11. 2.11 and then you need to do the logarithmic eh. To find the NF total which is 10 log of F. 10 log of F, you get 3.24 decibel. Uh, ini kalau semua sama. Okay. Uh, dalam exam, kita akan bagi line sedikit lah. Tak, tak ada, tak semua sama eh. Dia punya amplifier eh. Nanti saya akan tunjukkan contohnya. Untuk yang ini boleh faham tak? Kalau tak ada soalan, saya akan proceed eh. Saya akan teruskan. Uh, ini very straightforward. Okay, kalau tidak ada soalan, if there's no questions, I will move to the next example, okay, next topic, which is the equivalent noise temperature, which is TE. Okay, so TE is the noise produced from the system inside the device. 
Okay, it is in term of temperature, Kelvin. Okay, so kita nak lihat, yeah, TE is a hypothetical value that cannot be directly measured. So convenient parameter often used, uh, it is also indicates the reduction in the signal-to-noise ratio undergoes as propagates through a receiver. Okay, so setiap uh, device, okay, every component within the system produce TE, equivalent noise temperature. It is in Kelvin. Dia dalam sebutan Kelvin. So the lower the TE, the better the better the quality of the receiver. Okay, kalau TE ini rendah, lagi bagus. Okay, TE ini kita cuba supaya serendah yang mungkin. So TE is uh, proportional to noise factor. Dia adalah berkaitan terus dengan noise factor. Okay, lagi tinggi TE, lagi tinggi nilai noise factor. So the relationship is this one. TE equal to T multiplied with F minus 1. Okay, so TE equivalent noise temperature in Kelvin. T is the environmental temperature. Suhu bilik. So dalam case ini, by default, 17 degrees Celsius. So ini pun bergantung kepada soalan. Eh. Kalau kita berikan soalan uh, ambient temperature katakan 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, so you tukarlah kepada 25 degrees Celsius. Okay. Yang penting you kena tambahkan dengan 273 eh, untuk tukar daripada Celsius kepada Kelvin. Okay. F is a noise factor. in less. So when we rearrange the equation, okay, we rearrange the equation, it becomes like this. Okay, kita kita ubah suai soalan. Eh, kita ubah suai persamaan. Eh. Eh, sama ya. Eh. Dia bukan beza ya. Eh. Sama. So F equal to 1 plus TE over T. Ha, ini persamaan penting ya. Eh yang mana akan digunakan dalam test dan juga final exam. Okey, nanti saya akan tunjuk contohnya. Okey, so example 2.12 uh, determine the noise figure for an equivalent noise temperature of 75 Kelvin. So you want to find the noise figure uh, for an equivalent noise temperature TE 75K. So in order to find noise figure, first of all, we need to find F. Okay, F equal to 1 plus TE over T. Okay, ini seperti, uh, ini, equation yang ini. Eh. So 1 plus 75 divide with ambient temperature. By default is 290 Kelvin. So you get 1.258. And then the noise figure is 10 log 1.258. So you get 1 dB. Ha, ini pun saya rasa dia bundarkan juga eh. So, kalau you cuba 10 log uh, 1.258 uh, so you get uh, 0.9968. Ah ini bolehlah jadi 1 dB. Okay. So noise factor F I say second question asks equivalent noise temperature find TE if you are given an F. Ah ni terbalik pula eh. You diberikan an F cari TE. Okay, so from NF, you need to convert into F. Okay, tukar kepada nilai noise factor. How to do it? You need to do anti-log. Okay, so anti-log of 6 dB. Eh? Anti-log of 6 dB. So 10 log X equal to 6 dB. Uh, log X equal to 0 0.6. X equal to anti-log of 0 0.6. So you get uh, 4. Ini pun dia bundarkan juga. Eh? So tak apa. Uh, so 3.9810. Uh, I would suggest you to put 3.981. Uh, lebih, lebih tepat lah. Lebih tepat. Okay. But for example, they make it as simple for you to understand. So dia bundarkan kepada 4. Sebenarnya dia adalah 3.981. Okay. So equivalent noise temperature TE using the given equation, TE equal to T room temperature multiplied with F minus 1. So 290 multiplied with 4 minus 1, so you get 870 Kelvin. Ah. Boleh eh? So ini daripada persamaan TE yang tadi, yang ini. Okay. So you get... Uh, 870 Kelvin. Okay, so if you have question, you can ask. If you don't have question, I will move to the next example.
okay which is a noise measurement okay so noise measurement uh, uh, so in here we want to find the rms values of the noise voltage that we measured from a system at a different time okay kita ada satu sistem kita mengukur dia punya noise voltage eh, pada output pada masa-masa yang berbeza so we we get a different set of values okay we get a different set of uh, reading values okay we measure using a voltmeter we found out the noise voltage is a certain level and then we record it kita record ada beberapa bacaan and then from from that uh, readings we can find the rms voltage which is the average from all of the readings okay so this is what we call as the root mean square so it is formed by taking the square root of the average of the individual noise voltage which have been squared nah, macam mana caranya so example seperti ini eh. so in this example uh, we have 10 readings okay 10 voltage readings okay using a voltmeter so ada 10 bacaan minus 0.3 volt, 1 volt, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, uh, 0.6, minus 0.6, and until 0 0.9 volt. So you have 10 readings. Uh, so this is done uh, at different time. Okay, berbeza-beza. So kita akan cari berapakah RMS noise voltage. Actually, what we want to try to find is the, the average actually. Eh? Kita nak cuba cari average dalam RMS. So there are squared, uh, so the way we calculate it is that uh, they are squared. So first we need to find the quadratic summation, the first step. Okay. Find the quadratic summation for all readings. Okay. So uh, negative 0 0.3 square, 1 square, 0 0.2 square until uh, plus 0 0.9 square. So we get 3.325 volt square. So after find the quadratic summation, we can find the average of the quadratic summation. Berapakah purata quadratic summations itu? Okay, so uh, the quadratic summation 3.0325 divide with 10. Why 10? Because we have 10 readings. Kita ada 10 bacaan. If you have 100 readings, that means you need to divide with 100. Okay. So therefore, the average is, so this is step number two. Eh? So the average is 0 0.30325 volt square. Dia masih volt square lagi. Masih volt pasal dua. The third step, uh, ni langkah yang ketiga. The third step is, we do the square root of the average. Square root of the average is, uh, square root of 0 0.32325. So this is uh, 0 0.55 volt. So this is the RMS noise voltage. Okay, this is the RMS noise voltage. Ini yang dipanggil sebagai RMS noise voltage. Okay. So ada tiga steps. Okay. So let's look at the example. Uh, ini pun sama juga. So noise values in millivolt as follows are measured at various times. Uh, pada masa yang berbeza-beza, dia mengukur uh, uh, apa tu, noise tersebut menggunakan voltmeter. So ada beberapa bacaan iaitu 10, negative 100, 35 until minus 20. So you have 10 readings. So the question asks, what is the RMS noise value? What is the RMS noise voltage? Okay. So remember, the first step is to find the quadratic summation of all the readings. Okay, untuk semua bacaan tersebut. Quadratic summations. So we get 24,751 millivolt square. Okay, and then the second step. Find the average value of the quadratic summation. So 24,751 millivolt divide with 10. Why 10? Because we have 10 readings. Kalau ada 20 reading, so you bagikan dengan 20. Okay. So this is 2475.1 millivolt square. Uh, masih dalam millivolt. Okay. The third step is to find the 
uh, RMS value by square root of the average. Okay, square root of the average. Okay, square root of the average you akan dapat 49.75 millivolt. Okay, square root daripada sini. Eh? Square root of uh, 2475.1. Okay. So, dapat 49.75 millivolt. Boleh eh ini ada soalan nak tanya? Kalau tak ada soalan, uh, maybe I want to show another example. Eh. No questions? Okay, kalau if if you don't have question about this, I want to show uh, an example for you about the noise factor, noise figure. Okay, for the cascaded system. Okay, tak ada soalan sebab ni yang terakhir habis. Okay, so if you don't have question about this, I want to show uh, another example for you. Okay, I want to show another example about uh, this one. Uh, ini bukan test semester ni eh, a long time ago. Okay. So this you can get from the question banks. Ini ada dalam uh, folder yang saya berikan tu eh. Ada eh dalam ni. This is a long time ago, 2014-2015. Okay, lama dah eh. Uh, ni pun code BEB eh, code yang sama. Uh, okay, so ada tiga soalan. Okay, Q1, Q2, Q3. Okay. So at that time, the student uh, answer in the question book. Eh. Dia, dia jawab dekat sini juga. Eh. So ada soalan, dia jawab dekat sini. And then soalan, dia jawab dekat dalam situ. Eh. So I want to show about question number two. Okay. Uh, so ini question number two. So explain the term of intermodulation distortion with the aid of the suitable diagram. Uh, ini macam yang uh, dalam tadi so when you want to explain this okay macam intermodulation distortion ah ni eh so intermodulation distortion is the generation of unwanted sum and difference frequency when two or more signal are amplified in a non-linear device such as amplifier titik okay so the sum and difference frequency are called the cross product stop seeing the situ dan adalah gambar rajah yang ini Okay, we, we just want to know that there is there is uh, at least two input and then go inside the system and then it produce sum and difference. Adanya sum and difference frequency. Selesai. Okay, so penerangan itu tidak perlu panjang-panjang eh. You kena tengok markah. Markah pun tiga saja eh. So cukup sekadar apa itu intermodulation distortion dan macam manakah bentuk spektrumnya. Enough. Okay. Sama juga dengan harmonic distortion. What is harmonic distortion? Uh, harmonic distortion is unwanted harmonics of a signal produced through non-linear amplification. Uh, harmonics, uh, so uh, so ini cukup sekadar sehingga sini pun dah cukup. Eh? Kalau macam ni, harmonics are integer multiplies of the original signal. So, uh, this is, uh, the keyword here is a signal, single signal. Manakala tadi yang intermodulation distortion, the keywords are two or more signals. Uh, itu yang you perlu highlightkan. Okay. Kita nak kamu faham sama ada ini adalah beberapa banyak input yang ada. So we know, we want to know that whether you understand or not. Okay. And then question B. Uh, ini yang menarik ni. Question B. Okay. Uh, semua boleh nampak saya punya screen eh? Boleh eh? Boleh tak? Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Thank you for the update. Saya, saya risau saya cakap seorang-seorang. Okay. Okay, uh, this is a this is a good example that I want to show you. Um, uh, ini juga nampaknya seperti you punya assignment. Okay, looks like your assignment also. Eh? So how to solve this? So the question asks, an analog receiver uh, system consists of an antenna and three cascaded RF amplifiers shown in figure 2B. The system operates at 17 degrees Celsius. The signal transmission bandwidth is 300 megahertz. So you see that here you are given input signal power 5 watt. You are not given an I. An I tak diberikan. Okay, but an I you can calculate using KTB. 
Uh, ini at that time students confused. Eh? How can I find an I? It is not given here. How can I find as a uh, noise factor if I don't know what is this? Uh, sebenarnya, you boleh gunakan KTB. Uh, ini pun ada ada parameter di atas ini, eh? KTB. Okay. And then each amplifier has a, a given a certain parameters. The gain, you are given the gain and also the equivalent noise temperature. Uh, so, ini 4 dB, 5 dB. Uh, ini tiba-tiba ada 20. Uh, ini jangan anggap 20, eh? jangan anggap 20 dB. Eh? Dia adalah 20 sahaja. Okay. Uh, so, jangan ingatkan ini adalah 20 dB. Bukan, eh? kita tak tertinggal pun. Eh? So, it is actually 20. Okay, here TE1 is 77 uh, Celsius, TE2 300 Kelvin, uh, TE3 is 450 Kelvin. Okay, so uh, what to do? Okay, uh, and then you see that here SO is not given, NO is not given. Ah, uh, yeah. So what to do? So now the question asks determine the input signal to noise ratio in decibel. SNRI in decibel. And then what? Calculate total noise factor, F total. And then find SO and NO. SO in what? NO in dBW. Okay, NO in dBW. And then what? The receiver output signal to noise ratio can be improved by using a suitable configuration for the cascaded RF amplifier system. In your opinion, which RF amplifier should be placed at the first stage and why? Ha, ni yang ingat eh. Biasa student dia letak uh, amplifier apa yang perlu diletakkan pada stage yang pertama tetapi lupa nak tulis kenapa. Ha, so the question asks, in your opinion, how can we rearrange the amplifier so that we can produce better output SNR? Ah, okay. And what is the reason you choose that? Okay. So ini mungkin saya akan saya akan tunjukkan uh, uh, menggunakan apa Jamboard. Eh. Okay. Saya so open uh, whiteboard, open Jamboard here. Start on new whiteboard. Okay. So this will be shared to all students. Okay. Okay. So, boleh nampak eh semua? So, okay. So, now, uh, <coughs> Okay, so the question, the first question, the first question asks, determine the input signal to noise ratio, input SNR. So, kalau nak buat input SNR, maknanya kita perlu tahu berapakah nilai uh, SI, how much, uh, how much is the value of NI, how much, okay. SI is given, S, uh, SI is already given 5 watt. No problem. Now the problem is NI. Okay. So in order to calculate NI, so NI is equal to the KTB. KTB. Okay. What is K? K is Boltzmann constant 1.38. Okay. So 1.38 multiplied with 10 power of minus 23. Multiplied with T, temperature. Temperature here is 17 plus 273, so it is 290 Kelvin. Okay. Multiplied with the bandwidth. Bandwidth here is 300. 300 mega. Okay, 300 mega. So, uh, okay, help me to calculate. Eh? Tolong bantu saya kira. Saya kira conga. Uh, Kira-kira-kira saya dapat uh, 1.2. I get 1.2 times 10 power of minus 12. 
वन ओके एंड देन वन एंड देन नाउ वी वांट टू कैलकुलेट द द इनपुट एसएनआर ओके कितने ना किरे इनपुट एसएनआर सो इनपुट एसएनआर बिगिन एक्सपेंशन एक्सपेंश सो एसएनआरआई एसएनआरआई इज इक्वल टू वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवेन एट नाइन टेन इलेवन ट्वेल्व थर्टीन फोर्टीन फिफ्टीन सिक्सटीन सेवेंटीन एटीन नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी थ्री ट्वेंटी फोर ट्वेंटी फाइव ट्वेंटी सिक्स ट्वेंटी सेवन ट्वेंटी एट ट्वेंटी नाइन ट्वेंटी टेन ट्वेंटी इलेवन ट्वेंटी 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 ट्वेंट So dapat dalam empat point satu enam tujuh kali sepuluh kuasa dua belas eh times ten power of twelve. Let's try. Times ten power of twelve. Okay. So this is in term of decibel dia menjadi kalau dalam decibel bagi minta dalam decibel eh so 10 log of uh, 4.167 for ya dia ni jambut ni tak tak best ah 4.167 times 10 power of man, uh, 12 10 power of 12 So ini akan jadi bersamaan dengan satu dua enam eh one two six point one nine eight one nine eight decibel. And I would strongly suggest you to highlight the final answer like this. Gariskan supaya kita boleh nampak eh. So ini boleh cuba eh. Try use calculator. Okay, you tak perlu tulis sebab saya yang tulis. Okay, so you need to practice. You need to understand and practice using the calculator. Okay, so selesai soalan yang pertama. Kita pergi soalan yang kedua. So this, uh, ini kalau ada pertanyaan, tanya saya terus eh. Okay, kalau tak ada soalan, saya anggap you faham. Okay, the second question asks, calculate the total noise factor. F total. Macam mana nak kira F total? Okay, so F total That means we need to find uh, every noise factor Okay, noise factor from each of the amplifier Okay, kita perlu cari one by one Okay, so F1 is equal to 1 plus TE1 over T Okay, so ini adalah bersamaan dengan 1 tambah uh, 350 over 290. How I get 250? Uh, okay, 77 plus 273. Ini saya tambahkan eh, 77 degree Celsius plus 273. So I get 350 Kelvin. Remember all temperature must be in Kelvin. Okay. So this is two point two zero one. Okay, and then I need to find F two. Okay, so F two is equal to one plus T E two divided with T. So this is one plus three hundred Kelvin over 290. So this is equal to uh, 2.034. Okay. And then F3. 1 plus TE3 over T. Which is, uh, sorry. So ini bersamaan dengan 1 plus 450, 450 Kelvin divided with 290 Kelvin. So this is becomes 
Okay, cuba eh, guna calculator. So the question asks noise factor, total noise factor. So this is a three cascaded system. Bermakna F total is equal to F1 plus F2 minus 1 divide with A1 gain from the first amplifier plus F2 sorry F3 minus 1 divide with A1 multiplied with A2 gains from the previous amplifiers okay so what to do now so we need to calculate the total okay we need to calculate the total f so f total so f total f total is equal to f1 f1 tadi uh, 2.201 eh, tadi eh? yeah 2.201 plus F2, F2 adalah 2.034, 2.034 minus 1 divide with A1. A1 is, how much is A1? A1 adalah anti-log of 4 dB. Anti-log of 4 dB, how much? Uh, so, ni you kena practice. Anti-log of 4 dB, uh, anti-log of 0 0.4, 0 0.4, so you akan dapat 2.5.1.2. Okay, you will get 2.512. Okay, uh, ni anti-log of 4 dB. Plus, uh, remember kan eh, class, uh, jangan letak 4 eh. Uh, common mistake by student, dia letak 4. Sebab gainnya 4, so dia letak 4. So it is wrong. Jangan eh. Dalam freeze equation, there should be only unitless parameter. Okay. And then F3 eh. F3 is 2.552 minus 1. Divide with gain from the first amplifier 2.512. Multiplied with. Uh, gain from the second amplifier 5 dB. Anti log 5 dB, brother. Anti log 5 dB, anti log uh, 0.5, anti log 0.5. You are going to put 3.162. Okay, 3.162. Okay, 3.16. Okay, and then, so this is 2.201 plus 0 0.412 plus 0 0.195, 195. Okay, kemudian. Nah, saya tambahkan je lah. Tambahkan. So, dia jadi 2.808. Uh, nah. Jadi, kalau tak faham, terus tanya. Eh. So, now I already get total noise factor. Okay. Soalan yang ketiga. Uh, kalau ada soalan boleh tanya, tak ada soalan saya akan proceed. So the third question asks, find the output uh, signal power SO in watt and output noise power NO in dBW. Uh, macam mana ni? Okay. So yang paling mudah kita perlu cari nilai SO terlebih dahulu eh. Because uh, SO is equal to A, AP times SI. Okay. So, in order to find SO, we need to find how much is the total gain. Okay, kita perlu cari total gain. Okay, supaya kita boleh cari SO. Okay, so how much is the total gain? Eh? So, total gain, A total, okay, A total 
is equal to A1 multiplied with A2 multiplied with A3. Ini perhatikan, ini tidak boleh decibel. Okay, there should not be any decibel for the multiplication process. Tidak boleh ada. Eh? So, dia mesti dalam unitless. Decibel ni kalau kita nak buat dalam decibel, dia boleh tambah dan tolak sahaja dalam decibel. Eh? Nah, itu rujuk kepada video untuk chapter 1. Okay. So, A1. So, ini semua kena tukar dalam unitless parameter. Okay. So, maknanya adalah uh, anti-log of 0.4 sebab saya bagi 10 eh. And then uh, anti-log of 0.5. Uh, kenapa 0.5? Sebab saya bagi 10 eh. Sebab dia 10 log x. Okay. 10 log x, 5 dB. So anti-log of 0.5. Multiplied with 20. Uh, okay. So ini dapat dalam uh, 158.866. Okay, you can try use your calculator. Okay. And then what? SO. Ha, SO. SO is equal to A total multiplied with SI. So that means this is uh, 158.866 multiplied with SI is given 5 what? Uh, so, ini bersamaan dengan uh, 794.328. 794.328. Unitnya apa? What? Uh, make sure you don't forget to write what. Uh, unitnya mesti ada. Okay, so we already find SO. Now we want to find NO. Ha, ini yang masalah sedikit. Nak cari NO. Macam mana nak cari NO? Output noise. Uh, output noise. Uh, output noise power. Macam mana? So we can find NO based on the SNR output. Okay. Kita, tadi kita dah kira SNR input. Kita dah kira noise factor total. Then we can find SNRO. Remember that F total ataupun F is equal to SNRI divide with divide with SNRO. So kalau saya nak cari SNRO this is equal to SNRI divide with F total. Okay. So how to do this? So this is equal to uh, SNRI tadi berapa kita dapat kalau kita rujuk kepada soalan yang pertama. Okay, soalan yang pertama tadi kita dapat ni eh. Uh, SNRI, uh, yang ni eh. Jangan ambil decibel kerana kita nak bahagi ya eh, kita tak boleh guna decibel. So kita kena guna yang unitless parameter. 4.167 times 10 power of 12. Okay. So 4.167 so 4.167 times 10 power of 12 divide with uh, F total tadi 2 uh, ni eh, F total yang ni eh. F total 2.808. So 2. Point, so 2.808. Okay, so ini jadi uh, 1 plus uh, sorry 1.484 multiplied with 10 power of 12. Okay, so how how to find an O? Uh, so this is a SNRO. So in order to find an O, kita kena bahagikan a SO dengan a SNRO. Eh. 
So maybe I can write here, maybe. Okay. So in order to find an O, I can do like this, uh, SO divide with S and R. Oh. Okay. So this is equal to uh, SO tadi kita dapat di sini, eh? SO di sini, eh? 794.328. Okay. So 794, sorry. So 794.328. Uh, 328 divide with, uh, ini dalam what eh? Divide with SNRO adalah 1.484, 1.484 times 10 power of 12. So this will be uh, 5.3728. Uh, times uh, berapa ni? 10 kuasa negative 10. Okay. Apa dalam sebutan apa? Ini dalam sebutan what? Okay. Dalam sebutan uh, what eh? This is in term of what? Uh, so, tapi soalan tanya dalam des, uh, dalam DBW. So, how to find it? Uh, so maknanya NO in DBW is equal to 10 log yang tadi eh 10 log tadi uh, berapa tadi 10 log uh, 5.3728 eh? 5.3728 okay uh, 5.37 okay times 10 power of uh, minus 10. Nah, ni eh. Nah, ini jambot pun saya dah share dengan kamu semua. So, kamu boleh lihat juga eh. So, kemudian ini bersamaan dengan minus 92.6698. Okay. 698. Apa unitnya adalah DB W. Okay. Kenapa DB W? Sebab kita punya reference adalah satu watt. Eh. Reference ni adalah satu. Ini sebenarnya kalau kalau dilihat di sini ada satu kat sini. Eh. Nah, so, uh, biasa kita tak tulis lah. Sebab dia satu kan. Kita faham ada reference ni adalah satu. Tutu. Ya, silakan. And all the card board 6 tadi tu. Okay. Uh, 5.35 ke 5 ke 5.37? Uh, you dapat apa? 5.35 eh? Haa, 5.35 lima. Ya, 5.35 Cuba 794.328 bahagikan dengan uh, 1.484 eksponen negatif eksponen 12 uh, 5.35 Tiga lima dua enam eh. Ha. No, okay. Yang ni silap sikit eh. So, thank you for betulkan ni lima. Tiga lima dua enam. Tiga lima dua enam. Okay. Three five to six time uh, ten power of minus ten. What? Ha. Uh, ha. Okay, so ini tiga lima so saya betulkan ni lima puluh tiga. Okay. Tiga lima dua enam. Okay, so sepuluh uh, log lima puluh tiga lima dua enam eksponen negatif sepuluh so akan dapat 92.714 so saya betulkan yang ni 92.714 714 dbw okay. terima kasih dah betulkan eh 
uh, kalau kamu tak tak betulkan tadi sampai habis semester salah lah. Okay. So 92.714. Okay. Finish the third question. The last question, apa dia? So the last question say that uh, the receiver output signal to noise ratio can be improved by using suitable configuration for the cascaded RF amplifiers. Uh, in your opinion, which RF amplifier should be placed at the first stage and why? Uh, so ini maksudnya you kena rujuk kepada yang F tadi eh. Yang ini eh. So kita nak, uh, uh, the way we choose the amplifier is that we need to choose the amplifier that produce the least noise factor at the first stage. Okay, kalau dilihat di sini eh, maknanya ini uh, amplifier yang kedua boleh jadi station pertama. Kerana dia paling kecil. Amplifier yang kedua adalah yang per ini. Yang kedua terkecil. Dan yang ketiga adalah yang ini. Okey. Maknanya kalau saya nak susun eh, saya pergi ke sebelah eh, saya pergi ke sini. Maknanya cara kita susun adalah amplifier number 2 at the first stage followed by amplifier 1 followed by amplifier 3. Uh, why? Because amplifier 2 has the minimum noise factor. Nah, itu jawapan dia. Dia tanya kenapa? Reasonnya adalah kita memilih amplifier yang mempunyai noise factor yang terkecil mestilah berada di depan sekali, the first stage, followed by the uh, second least amplifier, third and so on, semakin besar. So, uh, noise factor yang paling besar kita letak yang dekat akhir sekali. Uh, so, that's the reason. Then we can do the, uh, then we can produce the minimum SNR. Uh, uh, soalan tidak suruh proof eh, soalan tidak suruh proof. Kalau soalan suruh proof, that means you kena uh, cari semula F total. Okay, if the question asks you to prove uh, your your selection, that means you need to find uh, F total again. That means your F total bersamaan dengan F2 tambahkan dengan ini saya padam eh. Ini 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 kalau eh ni sebab soalan tak tanya. Tetapi eh, kalau soalan tanya uh, justify your answer or prove your answer. That means you need to show. Okay, that means F2 plus F1 tolak 1 bahagikan dengan uh, yang tadi eh uh, F uh, daripada F2. F2 ini uh, amplifier yang kedua dia adalah uh, 3.162 eh. Yang ini eh. 3.162. Okay. Sebab dia daripada amplifier yang kedua. Tambahkan dengan F3 tolak 1 bahagikan dengan uh, so ni uh, okay. so dia adalah 3.162 darabkan dengan 2.5122 2.5122 Ha. So kalau you cuba kira you akan dapat nilai yang lebih kecil berbanding dengan yang ini. Okay. Uh, so uh, ni you boleh cuba sendirilah cuba masukkan eh. So maknanya F2 tadi uh, F2 tadi 2.034 tambah 2.201 tolak 1 bahagi 3.162 tambahkan dengan 2.552 tolak 1 bahagikan dengan 3.162 darabkan dengan 2.512 you akan dapat value yang lebih rendah daripada 2.0 2.808 okay less than this one which is better okay so we want to produce a, a out, total output is less eh? so kalau ft kecil maknanya we will get a better snr at the output okay kalau total noise factor itu kecil maknanya snr o akan menjadi lebih baik lebih besar Okay, ada soalan nak tanya? So, for this question, uh, they, ju they just want to know why. Itu saja. But if the question asks, 
prove it or justify your answer, that means you need to recalculate again. Okay, ada juga soalan yang pernah ditanya seperti itu eh. Justify, prove it, show. Uh, so, you dah buat pilihan, you buktikan, kira semula. Dapat jawapan dia. Okay. Okay, boleh dapatkan ayat tu je. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. Uh, ayat fullnya, okay. Uh, in, uh, ayat full, in my opinion, uh, RF amplifier 2 should be placed at the first stage because it it produce because uh, RF amplifier to produce the minimum noise factor. Ha, itu je. Ha, itu ayat dia. Eh? Uh, so, in my opinion, RF amplifier two should be placed at the first stage because it produce the minimum noise factor F two. Okay. So uh, ayat it, itu saja dah cukup dah. Uh, kalau nak ayat tambahan lagi, maknanya uh, so uh, the arrangement would be uh, kalau saya nak tambah eh, tadi sampai tadi itu dah cukup dah sebenarnya. Okay. So in order to prove that, uh, so the the susunan adalah uh, arrangement adalah uh, RF amplifier 2, RF amplifier 1, RF amplifier 3. Saya saya lukis yang ni lah. Uh, so you boleh tambah uh, ni lah, you punya susunan sebaiknya macam ni. Uh, so RF amplifier 2 kena di depan. Uh, sebab dia tanya ni eh, apa yang patut berada di depan. So uh, so you boleh lah tambah, you lukis uh, macam tu lah. Uh, tetapi cukup sekadar tadi eh. In my opinion, uh, RF amplifier 2 should be placed at the first stage because it has, it produces the minimum noise factor. Dah, itu je. So, itu sudah cukup. Okay. Ada lagi soalan? So, kalau tidak ada, saya akan uh, stop di sini so kita boleh ambil attendance. Eh? Kalau tak ada, kita boleh proceed dengan attendance. Uh, you can open your QR code, QR code reader. So, so siapa dah scan boleh keluar, boleh pergi ke kelas lain eh. So, kejap eh. So, this is section 2. Section 2 today, so QR code. Okay, boleh scan. Siapa dah scan boleh keluar, no problem. Uh, untuk format uh, report dan juga format uh, video nanti saya akan maklumkan. Eh. Kami tengah fikir eh, macam mana yang terbaik eh, yang memudahkan pelajar. Okay. So, siapa dah scan boleh keluar, eh. no problem. Tak perlu tunggu. Okay, thank you Dr. Okay, sama. Terima kasih Dr. Okay, sama-sama. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, welcome. Terima kasih, Doctor. Okay, welcome. Terima kasih, Doctor. Okay, welcome. Okay, welcome. Okay, siapa lagi? Ah, ya, yeah. tak dapat scan lah. Ah, ah. Nama siapa? Saya pakai ni Nurul Syuhada. Nurul Syuhada, sekejap eh. Ya, yeah, Nurul Syuhada. Okay. Terima kasih, Doktor. Saya sama. Assalamualaikum. Saya. Okay, siapa nama? Ah, Siti Aisyah. Siti Aisyah. Siti Aisyah Zakri? Ah, ah. Okay. Saya hey, juga Doktor. Okay, sama-sama. Nurul sama. Iwanina. Nurul Iwanina, okay. Terima kasih Doktor. Okay, sama. Ada lagi? Nurul Amira, Doktor. Nurul Amira, Nurul Amira. Okay. Siapa lagi? Ada lagi yang belum scan? So, dua 
orang absent eh. So kalau sudah selesai uh, saya akan tutup eh. So 3 2 1. Okay so sekian uh, saya akan uh, unshare stop sharing. So seorang absent eh seorang absent so stop sharing. And I will stop uh, stop recording.